So here we go, guys. Season 2 playoffs. This is the top four players. And our first best of five for today is Belcon's Lizardman versus Archon the Black's Vampire Counts. So round one of this matchup. And uh, yeah, we'll get into it just in a moment. So taking a look at the battle map here. As you can and see. have no fear, Romulan <laughs> is here. Hey, and I'd like buddy. to thank y'all again for uh, waiting, and I apologize for the uh, slight delay there. It is all good, sir. It was worth the wait to hear your buttery smooth voice. How are you doing? Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Likewise. <laughs> Likewise. And um, yeah, it looks like we have quite a spicy matchup here, don't we? Oh, yeah, we do. Falcon and Archon, the rivalry is real, and everybody is dying to find out what's going to happen here. So, That's right. The rivalry is real. The rivalry is real. But yeah, do you want to uh, take over the lizards for us and I'll do the vampire counts after? Sounds good, my friend. And starting off with this scaly force, going over the infantry, quite a strong core, I must say, from the get-go. And it contains, oh, interesting, a single, no, two, a one Soros Spear, one Soros Warrior with shields, two Temple Guard, one of them being the ROR, Star Chamber Guardians, now we have a do we have a small skirmish contingent with two skink skirmishers. Now for the big dinos we have a Bastilodon, Solar Engine, everybody's favorite laser lizard. I do have one ancient stegodon. Now for the leadership we have a skink chief on foot and he is uh naked. And now for the Lord we have Lord Bastamundi, the great Toad Lord himself. And uh, he has a standard kit, more or less. Banishment, shield the old ones, apotheosis, curse of the midnight wind. Uh, interesting. As well, uh, harmonic convergence and uh, net of aim and talk. Now, what has the vampire force brought for us, my son? Great question, Romulan. So, going over to Archon's side of the bat, um, the battlefield. Looks like we're going to see three units of zombies backed up by three units of skeleton spearmen. He's going to be walking them towards the lizardmen. Clearly not in any rush to close the gap. Um, aside from that, he's going to have a Black Coach and the Clav de Gash Mortis Engine. I mean, I do love the Black Coach here. We'll see what the Lizardman can do to try to catch it. Um, now, going up, the rest of his army will be in the air. And we're going to see those two Terror Geist I was talking about before the battle started, as well as two Felbats. Um, which, and then over here, it looks like the Regiment are down Bar Geist, the Devils of Schwarzhaven. And uh, they're going to be flying around that right flank as well. And then for the leadership in the air, where'd you go, sir? Looks like we have a Von Karstein Vampire Lord up here on a Hellsteed. And uh, it's going to have on top of him Storm of the Night, Undeath Resurgent, Flock of Doom, Raise Dead, Vahel's Dance Macabre, Invocation of Nehek. And that is it. So how's this solar engine doing so far? Oh, it looks like the perfect tool here to harass these vampire flyers. I would like to quickly say I did miss there was the uh, the ROR Red Crested Skinks. Oh, yes. The cohort of Sotor of Sotek, the Unbreakable Skinks, and uh, oh, nice little uh, breath going off. Look at that. Oh yeah, uh, right into the Star Temper Guardians. Yeah, 14 models down, and uh, that's a good start. Since that is the only, uh, you know, besides the Sword Spears, the only anti large on the field here, because mm -hmm. it seems like the Dinos could be in. Oh, look at this. Nice Black coach. Net of a Mintok. Got right down on top of that black coach. Here come the Star Chamber Guardians, and you know, I'm wondering to if that ancient Stegonon's gonna try to go around and cut off its avenue of escape. Oh, there are two Ooh. laser lizards. I actually missed one of them. Wow. And uh, yeah, they, <laughs> they look like they may just punish this black coach here. It could crumble out in a second here. Oh, is, is it gonna get damage. away? It looks that like it may be able to. Yeah, if that uh, black coach comes back, uh, that's just going to, you know, pay off in boons for the uh, vampire accounts with all those buffs triggering for the uh, black coach here. And now the front lines are about to meet in this uh, little vampire blob here. Is, it's getting slowed down by the ancient Stegodon, though. It's a very good move. Yeah. Meanwhile, over here in the back lines, though, you see the vampire count air forces landing down onto the ground. But I have to say, there's Temple Guard nearby. This is a risky move, in my opinion. Uh, I know he's trying to take out the solar engine, maybe prevent that fire from coming in, but... I think landing in, well actually never mind, I just ate my words because those terror guys took out no problem. They're back but now, in the air. now speaking of risky moves, <laughs> the uh, black coach went in to try and distract uh, the uh, the fire from the terror gooses and now it looks like it won't make it out alive here by yeah. side, my goodness, there we go. 
very valuable unit taken care of relatively early in the battle, just within the first three minutes. Yeah, it's very interesting to see, too, because it just barely made it out just moments ago, and it was uh, keen to go right back in. Oh, man, and now the, far uh, the fire is turned oh, focus on the cloth and the gash. Oh, Look where did that banishment go? Ooh. It's going into the vampire uh, right flank, and oh. I think it did some good damage. Ooh. Oh, it, it, that's a pretty good one. That's not we'll a bad one back to the line. Went pretty well for a minute, and I have to say the Solar Engines are doing so well for the Lizardmen in this battle. Um, the Claw of Nagash right now, look at it, half health, and I'm pretty sure most of that is just coming from the Skirmishers and the Solar Engine. Yeah, I really like this uh, triple uh, Dino Artillery here. He knew Arkham was probably going with the Air Force. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps his trademark in this matchup. And uh, it's just an excellent tool to apply pressure the whole game and uh yeah just doesn't allow the flyers to pick away and cycle charge you have to win yep absolutely and the huge hp pull too of this ancient stagger on you can see it's taking a ton of damage uh, from the terror geist but it just has so much health it can really take the punishment and the apotheosis coming in from mazda mundi consistently is just really making that a target that the vampire counts are really having a hard time chewing through yeah and with all these big targets and uh the withering fire from these solar engines, I mean, this mortis engine might go down, and without that, it might be tough for this infantry to last out, and then, without any support, the terror gooses are just going to get chopped up by the Temple Guard. Yeah. Well, and I'm just wondering what in this Vampire Count army is going to be able to chew through the Temple Guard. Um, the Temple Guard are going to be, in my opinion, one of the most threatening units on the field, because the Vampire Counts have tools to take out single-entity monsters, but if those monsters are surrounded by a bunch of anti-large elite infantry, then... I don't think they stand much of a chance. Absolutely, and one Temple Guard hasn't lost a single model. It's at full fighting capacity. Where is that Temple Guard that I'm missing? It's uh, it's back by oh, the Solar wow. Engines and uh, yeah. Lord Master Moonly, which is interesting since the Star Chamber Guardians may be better off uh, with Master Moonly, but regardless, they're just uh, just mulching the vampire yeah. from behind. And I imagine you're saying the Star Chamber Guardians because of their Guardian trait there. Yeah, yeah. indeed, indeed. Makes sense. Oh, one as terror well, goose getting the, uh, sandwiched. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, that's that. Oh, no, well, with the, uh, the Star Chamber Guardians, even if they take, you know, massive amounts of damage, they'll fight to the last model, since they are essentially unbreakable with mm -hmm. 100 leadership and, and just losing leadership in general. Yeah, this terror goose, though, my son, it looks like, uh... I mean, we'll see. They are putting a lot of damage down in the Ancient Steg. They most certainly are. Um... Ancient Steg look like it's pulling through its Temple Guard line. Uh, smart move, in my yeah. opinion. Absolutely. And oh, yeah, it's just there's just so much pressure on the vampires right now. While they, you know, they need to break the infantry line, which they need the support of their monsters to do so. But yep. all the while, they're just getting peppered by these lasers. Yeah. Machine gun blow darts. And, uh, yeah, they're just taking the worst. Thing. Exactly, and I do want to point out too, like the reason the solar engine is so great here, just to reiterate, is like the flame damage and the magical yep. damage. The magical damage on top of the mortis engine is wonderful, the flame damage on top of the terror geist is wonderful, because the terror geist have that regeneration, so they have a debuff to flame damage, and then the cloth nagash has that physical resistance, so just a really versatile unit, and they're also not bad in combat against the zombie chaff. As well, and the, uh, the blinded really, uh, you know, stacks with the poison. Yep. Which helps. And yeah, look at that. One Terra Goose, uh... Looks like one Terra Goose died already. Yeah, I believe so. And now the second one looks like it's about to follow suit. And oh. once the Terra Gooses are dead, I think this battle's over. Oh, another huge banishment. This might be the... Oh, there it is. That's the banishment he needed. That took care of him. And honestly, a banishment over the cohort of Sotek is not a bad idea, right? Refuse to die, pop a banishment over him, it won't kill any models. I like it. Absolutely, and uh, all these uh, vampire troops are just blobbed up around four skinks. And uh, that could yeah. be the uh, the coffin. I mean, the nail in the vampire's coffin, you could say. Absolutely. I mean, he'll just think he's going to bed, but somebody's going to nail him in there when he's in there yep. going to sleep, you know. <laughs> Sorry, vampire. Yep. Will not rise again. But uh, he is trying to heal back here with the uh, Blob Nagash and uh, the Devils of Sports Hop. Yeah. It's a good move. Definitely a good move. I mean, seems to be a futile gesture at this point, in my opinion, but I can't fault him. I would you know, agree. The balance of power is fairly even. 
Um, but yeah, just with how many Temple Guard there are in the field, and the fact that there's still three single entity monsters and Mazda Moon be on the field with good health, yeah, not gonna happen today. Yeah, especially agree, when yeah. they have the artillery still. Like, look at them; they're still shooting and putting pressure down. Yeah, and this Mortis is almost at a ceiling cap too, just to show how much damage it's taken all game. Despite all the healing, it's still going to fall here. And, uh, yeah, this is a very nice army here, I must say, uh, by the Lizardman player. Uh, it's just, it seems like it's perfectly tailored to what he thought the opponent was going to bring. You know, the banishments, the nets, the, uh, the lasers, all the poison. Uh, of course, a few great anti-large anti units. And, yeah, it's just a great list, I must say. Well played. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. Um, very well-built army. Had all the tools he needs, and it seemed to specifically catered to, uh, you know, counter Archon's playstyle of being able to easily take out leadership or anything like that. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, there's nothing that's easy to snipe here. And this is a scary list that Arkin brings in uh, several matchups, or at least he goes air heavy, yeah. it seems. And uh, it's very effective for him. Oh, here we go. The uh, double Bastilladon on the, uh, the Mortis engine. Gary going after that, uh, that vampire card. Yeah, I mean, well, first round is going to go to Falcon here, but if there's anything we know, Ark on the Black is somebody you never discount. Otherwise, you wind up like Oprah and Martell with your head exploded on the pavement. So, looking forward to seeing the second battle, but I would say it's a, quite a convincing victory for Falcon there in the initial round. You will say her name. You will say her name. <laughs> but, yeah, indeed. Yes. He has to stay, uh, you know, focus on the task at hand, eye on the prize here. Mm -hmm. Because it's a big uh, first win to take out the vampires, certainly. But, yeah, I just, I really like this lizard list. It just seems, you know, it's the ideal thing you want to take against this vampire list. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well played. Yeah, no, great game. And, I mean, just looking at that list again, it's just, yeah. And that's why I like Falcon so much as a player is, like, before the match was starting, I was describing a totally different army than what he brought, because I know he likes to bring those very fast mobile armies, but he's also somebody who I see drastically changes builds in order to address the person he is playing, um, which to me is a sign of a very high-level player that he's able to do that and adapt, whereas most players, like myself included, kind of need to stick to one army per matchup and not confuse myself too much. But yeah, very nice army, very well played, and we'll see if Archon can bring it back here in the second round. Arkin brings some interesting armies here with some uh, pretty cool unit picks, so we'll see if he brings it here. And I'm looking forward to the unit, one unit in particular, I should say. And I'm hoping we see it. And that's Old Queen Bessie. Archon is known for bringing the Old Queen Bessie, so I guess we'll have to see. I mean, this is a good map for Wood Elves, though. A lot of forced, um, so I like the pick here. Um, oh, Andrew card. Let's throw that up before I forget. Yeah, Falcon with his Wood Elves versus Archon the Black and the Vampire Coast. This is round two of a best of five um, semifinals right here. So whoever wins this moves on to the final to face BBB Chief or Aerocrastic, which will be the next best of five we watch after this. Some good matchups today. Absolutely. Should be another great series. And, uh, yeah, like you said, this is a great map. Very uh, dynamic. Can be good for the Wood Elf play here with the wood on either flank. Mm -hmm. And there are pretty good Vanguard options as well, and we'll see if Felcon takes advantage of that and uh, any sneaky plays here or there. Under that, okay. well, I mean, um, I'll go ahead and cover the Wood Elves, and then you want to do the Vampire Coast for us? Sounds great, my friend. Alrighty, so, starting with the Wood Elf Infantry, we're going to see five units of Dryads, and guess what Falcon's doing. Did you watch the stream yesterday, by chance? Oh, no, I was uh, actually on Cape. I okay. Was, uh, away. Um, he's taken to spelling out his clan with his army deployment, so check out oh, the Oh, I XMT. actually saw that, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that uh, on another stream. Oh, nice. It was, uh, yeah, he did that, like, uh, the other week or something. It's, uh, it's, it's, his thing. it's quite a bit of style, I must say, man. You know, that is style. It's something to win. It's something to win with style. And, it uh, is. And, you know, he spells it out for his here. opponent, too. You know, it's like, XMT, <laughs> what's up, man? That's who I am. But, yeah, yeah sorry man. for getting so distracted there. The five dryads, we then have the uh, four... I think it was worthy of note, for sure. Oh, sorry. Always but, want to uh, point that out. But, yeah, yeah five man. eternal guard and uh, four way watchers. 
Yeah, so four Way Watchers, five Eternal Guard, five Dryads. He's going to have a Branch Wraith on the ground, standing behind Durthu like it's his kid. Like, Dad, Dad, turn around, talk to me. There's the Earth Blood on top of him, and then Papa. he's going to have Durthu. Papa. <laughs> Durthu with the Sword of Daith, Foe Seeker, Flock of Doom, and that will be all. So what does the Vampire Coast got for us, friend? Well, it's interesting. Uh, it's a bit of uh, an Air Force once again. Which is interesting, consider considering how the last game went. Mm -hmm. uh, he is not deterred one bit. But anyway, we will start with the infantry, as we normally do. And uh, let's see. Yes, it was just three deckhand mobs. And now they are backed up by two depth guard. So very strong uh, infantry there. Should be able to mulch a lot of what the wood elves have brought. Now we do have quite a bit of mobility. We have three scurvy dogs. And for skirmish contingent, in the air, we have the deck droppers. Four of them. Just the standard deck droppers, the non-AP unit. And we have a Death Shriek Terror Goose. As well, we do have, now for the leadership, we have a Vampire Fleet Captain. Four Vampires, standard stuff. Oh, actually, no summon. Just the Van Hell's Dance of Cobb and the Heck, as well as uh, Tom. And then Luther Harkin, Honest Terror Goose. Looks like he has uh, the full sniping kit. Oh no, just a few. Just horn swaggle, excuse me. Yep, just horn swaggle, and that rounds out a very strong Air Force once again. And uh, we'll see how it does this time. What is the. Oh yeah, so uh, I guess we're ready to go. Yeah, and I think and, there's uh, actually I'm five scurvy dogs, by the way. I'm not sure if you five got. Five scurvy dogs? Yeah, there's two yeah. over in the other forest, it looks like. No, Wait. no, no. Yeah, that, it's, it's just three. I saw those uh, prior. So. Uh, is it just three? Oh, wait, no, sorry, yeah. it's four. There's there's four. There's four? Yeah, there's two in one force and two in the other. Oh, yeah, I missed those. Excuse me, yeah. So, oh, uh, yeah, four here. scurvy dogs. Very cool. We'll see uh, how they do. It could be a perfect counter here for these four way watchers, though. It very well could. And, uh, you know, the scurvy dogs absolutely key. We saw one battle where uh, Rigson went up against Mew Kip, and his Vampire Coast did not have the scurvy dogs, and he got shot to death by the High Elf. So, looks like Archon isn't going to try to make the same mistake. Yeah, I think scurvy dogs are just uh, essential in this matchup. Even if you just bring a couple, uh, just apply a little bit of backline pressure, which is uh, can be a rare thing in some Vampire Coast matchups, so a little bit can go a long way. Yep. And uh, yeah, I, re I really like this, though. Four, four scurvy dogs, so much mobility. Seems like it's going to be tough sledding for these White Watchers. But then again, there's no real pressure on this army here. The... Uh, what Elf can kind of just mulch through this uh, Vampire Coast front line and then uh, pick away the targets they want. Ooh, look at this. Oh, wow. Nice. Depth Guard just taking a face full of arrows, and oh, that has to hurt. Those units are yeah, not this, cheap. Yeah, this is the thing I was talking about. The uh, Vampire Coast does just, you know, they need to try and seize the initiative here because these Way Watchers deletes the Depth Guard, deletes this Vampire fleet captain which i don't know why he's walking out of the forest honestly my son it seems like he needs to stay what hidden he's the next target to go down most likely yeah it looks like he's diving his air force on top of the way watchers in a desperate attempt to save his depth guard and you know there's durthus here he has the eternal guard here that just seems so premature yeah yeah i mean durthu can slap this uh, single terror goose around no problem and yeah. uh I guess he's counting on no mass to hold down to the flyers, though. I mean, that's probably a yeah. safe assumption that he can get in and get out without too much problem since there's no way watchers to pin him in place. But, I mean, Wild Riders. Yeah, I do kind of like this move. He's trying to apply pressure early uh, while he can anyway. He has so yeah. many key units that are just about to basically just you know, disappear. There we go. Depth Guard gone. Yep. So uh, he needs to apply any. Too. Yeah. He should just get in on Durthu if he can, which is really his maybe only possible win condition if he can just snipe Earth through since yeah this yeah. is another maybe perfect army here oh yeah. look at that uh, scurvy dog play that was oh no it's a misplay he needs to keep moving them he needs he to keep moving there. them but he got another He's... one coming around from the other angle so some good micro there but yeah you're absolutely right he needs to pick up these scurvy dogs and uh yeah, was, get him moving it was uh, such a nice play there too he just uh, looks like he got caught on the edge there and yeah that's huge you know that's uh from a great play to a misplay and, well, we wow, see one Dryad point. and one Way Watcher routing over here on the Wood Elf right flank. Um, not the most routing, but still some progress at least. 
And now he has the deck droppers diving in on the Waywatchers on the left flank. So it looks like he's actually getting some of the Waywatchers compromised. As well at, you know, at what cost with this Terra Goose crumbling? The mm -hmm. entire... Yeah, the entirety of the Vampire Coast front line is essentially gone. Oh, one Death Guard has stabilized, though. That could be huge if they can oh, wow, keep yeah. regen but... Uh, this Terra Goose is going after Durthu. He needs to that, just get yeah, back get that, there. Get out of there. Durthu's going to spank yeah. you out of existence, you silly, yeah, silly Terra Goose. Yeah, one more slap of that sword, and that Terra Goose is uh, Christmas yeah. dinner. Well, that Terra Goose is dead to rights yeah. now. Just Yeah, he's not getting away from the two-way watchers that just came back online. And the thing is, even if these deck droppers dive down on the... Well, oh, wow, look at that. How many way watchers have routed? Seems like. He was able to get two of them off um, of the map, so he's only got two way watchers left, so I, that's what I'd say. That his scurvy dog play has actually been pretty good, because um, it looks like most of his scurvy dogs are still alive, and he was able to get two of the way watchers off, but he needs to get them back in there. Right now, Archon is leaving his scurvy dogs way out of formation, not doing anything right now, and he needs that pressure desperately. Absolutely, he has it. I mean, this is some really good play here and there. Uh, I mean, obviously a few misplays. Yeah. Uh, to try and, you know, drag himself back in this game, it just seems, you know, so tough for the vampires. As Dirt Dude's just slapping around key targets. Yep. Vampire Fleet Captain is uh, down to half health and almost got sniped there. Yep. And well, now, now this, the Terror uh, Geist is gone, too, so it's just, yeah. you know, only Luther. I don't think Luther's going to win in one on one combat with Dirt Dude. No, he, he's trying to snipe the Branch Wraith here, which uh, would be a great move. But now the uh, the final Death Guard is dropping, all the infantry is gone. It's just the mobile units for the Vampire Coast, and there's plenty of anti-large, and, uh, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of bodies here helping uh, support, you know, Big Papa Durthu, who can pretty much slap around everything at this point, unless uh, Luther Harkin can, yeah, I mean, Luther Harkin can't really sit down on Durthu at this point and shoot away, since yeah. there's Way Watchers and there's no infantry engaged. Yep. Actually, no, he can shoot with the, uh, the deck droppers, actually. He could shoot for some time. Yeah, no, he, okay. he's fulfilling yeah, yeah. the attacking rule right now, yeah, but absolutely. he's almost out of ammunition with some of them, and it's I just still don't think it's going to do enough damage to really change the story here. However, we still have Invocation in the Heck um, from the Vampire Fleet Captain, so I guess we'll see. If he's able to get some cheeky rear charges and some key routes, maybe just maybe he can pull something off, and it does look like he's going to be able to kill that Branch Wraith. Yeah, that's a good target. Yeah. So, uh, Falcon's doing a pretty good job dodging right now. Mm -hmm. In the middle of his Eternal Guard, this could, uh, you know, just buy enough time, waste the ammo. And if he can just keep this unit alive. Yeah. I love Falcon's we'll move here, pulling into the forest, saying, like, well, if you're going to shoot me, I'm going to move into the forest, get my bonuses since I'm a wood elf, and then uh, when you run out of ammo, come and get me. Because right now there is nothing he has that can catch anything in the Vampire Coast Army, with, uh, Coast Army, which I kind of interpret as like, well, that means the Vampire Coast needs to attack once they're able, because right now they're just cleaning up the peripheral units. Yeah, it seems that's the, uh, well, he could actually catch the Vampire Fleet Cap. Is it on the crab? Yeah. Oh no, it's on foot, you're right. I lied. Oh, no. Actually, uh, I think only, uh, a way watcher would be able to catch it, and there are no way watchers remaining in this army. So actually, I think the vampire fleet captain is just two ticks faster than uh, a dryad. <laughs> he is. Oh, that's funny. So, in that case, there's nothing in this army that can catch anything in the vampire counts our coast army. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, Luther Harkin does have quite a few shots here. What's the call here? So, so the, I, I guess I, this is kind of a gray area unless you know the answer, but I mean, like, technically he's not fulfilling the attacking rule, but technically he can't fulfill the attacking rule, right? Like, if the other yeah. player is purposely pulling their guy away, I don't, yeah, it's kind of weird to me. Like, what do you do here? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a... The ammunition's about to run kite out. situation for the most part. He's just yeah. shooting and then uh, Falcon tries to chase, but because it's in a late game, it's uh, a little yeah. different. No, I'm not. Sh Just there's no healing left for the uh, the Wood Elves, and if Luther Harkin sits on top of Durthu, I don't think it really matters if there is a, you know, 
Oh, that was a really nice breath, though. Really nice breath from Luther Harkin. And he still has 21 shots on Luther. But only, yeah, it looks like eight shots on the bats. Single entity shooting doesn't count as attacking, does it? No, but the bats, the bats count. I know, but they're not shooting. Oh, yeah. That is indeed true. They may just uh, not be on fire at will, so I'll have to get a volley off with them in a minute. It was, uh, here we go. Looks like he's moving in. Yeah. I'm going to say, as long as he's firing the ammo from the fell, um, from the deck dropper, he's legal, but if not... Yeah. But I would like, uh... Yeah, well, either way, the uh, rules do state if you can't catch any units, there can't really be, like, uh, a Benny Hill <laughs> moment in the battle where you just run around in circles. You are, uh, yeah. How to take a defensive position. Uh, if I correctly remember the rules, that is. I may have got too much sun this weekend, but... I'm just going to say Falcon move towards the caster. No, I think he's fine, though. That uh, is the correct interpretation. Oh, in the rules... But regardless, it's kind of boring. No, I haven't... Uh, I could take a quick look. Take a quick look and just verify something. Yeah, I'm just telling him to move forward. Archon needs to start firing. Yeah, regardless, let's just have them attack. We uh, No one likes a uh, stalemate in the battle. It's, uh, it's only a 20-minute battle. It's not a three-day affair. This is, yeah, very silly. Take a look and see what Chad is saying on the matter. Yeah. This is Either why way, there are many time. shots, so I, I like them to just you know use the ammo regardless. It's yeah, pointless to it's stupid. To He's not so using his ammo. There are only twenty or so shots. Uh, I mean, there's only actually like seven shots between uh, the bats and Luther. So this is. Uh, I think he used. He's shot a few rounds with the bats. He has, but he's been very much like... <laughs> one every 30 seconds. One yeah, every 30 so. seconds letting Luther Harkin oh, use his ammo, okay. which is yeah. annoying. But, like, he needs to go into combat now. There's nothing else to do get into combat. Yeah. Balance of power is in his favor now, though. Yeah, that's big. Luther Harkin is a, a beast of a duelist with poison. Massive AP. And, uh... Has he used all his breaths? I assume he, he has since yeah. Velcon's going into a very deep formation. There's just a ton of Eternal Guard here, but yeah, I'm very worried about Luther Harkin taking out Durthu. He does have quite the HP advantage, you know. 2,000 yeah. HP higher than Durthu, not to mention the fact that he does have regeneration in combat. Yeah, but Durthu is a beast. He still he has that physical resistance, and uh, I believe in the spirit of Treebeard. Though it looks like he may be a bit outgunned by uh, this mad vampire flying on his vampire bat. We'll see, this could be the last march of the Ents. Here we okay. go, they're crashing into the, uh, the dire wolves. I mean, scurvy dogs here. Scurvy dogs. Scurvy oh. dogs diving in here. Look at that, Luther Harkin's going right after it. Getting right after Dirt Thu. Yeah, and he's doing a ton of damage already, but he's taking some damage in return. What's going to happen here? Yeah, Van Hill's Dance Macabre has been popped to help him get some extra damage down. Oh, but he's, uh... He's redirected onto the Eternal Guard here. It looks like uh, a bit of laps there, and now he's turned about facing. Going after Durthu once again. Oh, wow, look at all these uh, deep buffs on Durthu. He only has 10 attack. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Now that they've all popped back. And now he's back at uh, 73. Uh, melee attacking. Well, we'll see. Look at that. Luther Harkin quickly has met his healing cap after that bout with Durthu. And Durthu does Durthu. have 900 HP left, but he's going to take a big charge from Luther Harkin in the back, it seems. 
And... No, nope. he didn't take any damage. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, That's unexpected. Indeed, and Luther Harkin has taken a damage. Dirt Doom is just such a beast. He is just clubbing Luther Harkin. He doesn't give a crap about his pistol. He doesn't care about his regen. He is just smacking down with the sword of Dirt. My goodness, look at that. Wow. It really came out worse for wear there. He doesn't yeah. want any of Dirt Doom, but. Oh, but like Dirt is wavering too, and. Oh man, yep. one more charge though could yep. be the end of Durthu. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, but we'll see. Still no hit. Still and no Luther hit, Harkin, yeah. once again, uh, he's down below. Oh yeah, he takes a hit. Durthu. Oh, there you go. Durthu finally just takes some damage. Oh man. This is a crazy one. This here. is a crazy fucking battle right now. Seeing Luther Harkin down to a thousand HP. Durthu oh, is coming out. Oh no! <laughs> Luther just gets away there, but he's he's below a thousand HP as well. And his re I mean his regen cap has been hit. Indeed. Durthu just somehow holding on. How is he doing this? I don't Durthu know. Is a hero. Durthu is a hero, and it's amazing that he is still alive after all of this attempted Lord sniping. <laughs> is he gonna be able to do it? Durthu. Oh, Durthu's down to 116 now! somehow still fighting but uh he's been huge debuffs he has no melee defense but still he hits luther and luther is uh, attacking the eternal guard he's lost the uh, sight of Durthu, but they're, oh they're Durthu's is down oh my god can luther harkin win this or is he just gonna die to eternal guard also how are the deck droppers still in combat right now <laughs> yeah they can sometimes do well in this uh kind of a massive pop here all blank secured, but yeah, there's still leadership for the vampires, but Luther Harkin only 700 health. And still, the balance of power is in the Wood Elf favor, and yeah. that's massive with their their good leadership on the Eternal Guard. Wow. Okay, if he doesn't put somebody back in combat, I'm just calling this a loss. Chasing Rowdy Nitz is not attacking. Okay, you lose. <laughs> I can done. Like I'm sick of having to do this every time with him. <laughs> yeah, it is a bit much. It's constantly, but uh, I mean, he's not attacking right now. He is pulling out. You have to leave yeah. a unit in combat. It's not attacking, dude. Yeah, uh, he, I, I don't know what to say here. This. Is, uh... Yeah, no. Uh, just yeah, just send a bat in here. It's such a close fight. It's uh, it'd be a shame, but yeah, really. It's just... if Rowdy News isn't attacking, right? Uh, unless there have been changes, and I believe there have not. All right, cool. He lost. Sweet. It is? Ah, damn it, Loopy. When did that change happen? I mean, I just think he's gonna lose it anyways because Luther Harkin literally can't do anything and it's not like these bats are going to be winning the combat, but here comes maybe a terror route? I don't know. Like, yeah, crazy things just that happen. Frustrating. Yeah, because that's multiple times just kind of skirting the rules there. It's, uh, that change happened nine months ago. Oops. <laughs> yeah, it's been some time, and still, yeah, it seems like regardless of Rumble. Maybe we'll just fight it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Apache wrote the rules. Apache, can you put in your verdict on chasing Rowdy Newts as attacking or not? Yeah, it looks like the terror route here. It's kind of no, yeah, terror route. Yep. Yeah. All right, Magnum Knights, thanks for letting me know.
I mean, it looks like they yep. still may not win. Like, what the hell? Uh, can't tell. Yeah, it's still it's just uh, cycle charging. Even with only 440 HP. Unless these uh, drill guard can get their spears on Luther. You know, you good folks in. I mean, he's taking like you know, 20 damage charge. <laughs> yeah, he's not taking much. I mean, the Vampire Fleet Captain, like, this is... Just gonna let it play out. Because at least if Felcon wins, I don't need to worry about a dramatic yeah, call we'll that just, I need yeah. to make, but... We can go up to the replay and, yeah, make a verdict at that point as well, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Chad and some other rule ad rules admins uh, voice their opinion on it. Yeah. It should be good. But still, I think... Uh, it's just one of those cases again, you know, multiple uh, times the rules are being skirted. It was uh, very unfortunate. It's just been such a well-played battle and uh, such an, you know, so much ebb and flow in this battle, which is r really what you want to see. So, yeah, let's yeah. see uh, how it ends out. It looks like it, regardless. We'll see how it ends say, out. The Wood Elves are going to pull through here with their very uh, stalwart infantry uh, performance here. Looks like they may just do that. Yep. So, what I'll do then after this battle, I apologize to Archon because chasing is attacking. I was wrong, and uh, as the chat seems to have pointed out, and then uh, we will uh, move on with our lives. Again? I guess so. A long time yep. ago. Oh my god. Yeah, at this point, it's just the balance of power. So much in favor of the Wood Elves. The low leadership, crumbling, disintegrating. That's yeah. a GG. Bit of a tense battle at time. At times, and uh, yeah, very well played. But maybe uh, just the scurvy dog play being a bit more keen at times. Maybe mm -hmm. uh, could have eliminated those way watchers, get a bit more, a bit more fire down. But also, uh, I just think that Terra Goose going after Dirtu as it was crumbling. Uh, I imagine he'd like that play back. Yeah. For me. Would you like to take the Empire Army, my son, or the Lizardman Army? Speaking of I'll that. do the Empire Army because I find it interesting. So Indeed. it's like four Pistoliers, Outriders with grenade launchers. He's going to then have Royal Thor Griffites and then three, or yeah, three other Demogriff Knights. One of them with Halberds, two regular. Up in the air, Carl Franz going to have Galmaraz, the Reichland Groomfang, uh -huh. as well as Stand Your Ground and hold the line, and he's also going to have a caster over here, appears to be a Jade Wizard, uh, going to be bringing on him or sorry, Earthblood and Dwellers Below, along with Life Bloom. So, all Cav Empire Army, and we'll see what the Lizardmen have brought for us, Romulan. And now, the uh, Lizardmen have gone with the ladder, the two uh, infantry lines, they have gone with the full Skink Rush threat, and uh, I really like this, it's very mobile, very fast, gets on the Empire quickly, and it's probably better to deal with this em uh, mobile empire army now for the skinks we do have four skink cohorts with javelins backed up by two red crested skinks now for a small skirmish contingent we do have a single alien skink and uh yeah now we have one croc score two cold one riders and two horned ones in the forest and for the lord and uh leadership we have two Skink uh, Priests, one Lord of Beasts, one Lord of Heavens. One just has Wind Blast, one just has the Manticore Summon, and the Lord is the Source of Blood. And he has all the typical buffs. Horn of uh, First Beast, or Horn of Kygor. Yes, Horn of Kygor, a little massive melee buffs, and uh, we'll see, this is quite a bit of infantry. One Chameleon Skink, which maybe is the most important unit in this army to help push these uh, Skirmishers away. Then again, these Skink Jabs will be massive at that as well. That we'll see. This is uh, going to require a lot of micro from the Empire Army. Indeed, it will. And I mean, right now, seeing the Empire looking like they're tentatively, you know, probing the Lizardman Army, but not committing to anything yet. Because, yeah, this is going to be one of those armies that if you start taking damage, it's going to be hard to come back from. But very curious to see how this works out. I mean, these Kink Cohort with the Javelins. Should be able to dish out some nice damage against Pistoliers, at least on their first throws. 
Yeah, and as well, they have equal range, so once the Pistlers try to get off a few shots, those Javelins should just be raining down upon them, and uh, Pistlers seem like a very odd, odd choice, I must say. It seems like you want Outriders for their AP. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what the Pistlers would really shoot besides Pterodons, maybe. With all this AP from the Lizardmen, it just seems like a, a death ball. Raptors, Croxgores. It might just... I mean, I don't know, there are a lot of demis here, though. Wait. Oh, wow, look at that. But yeah, it's, uh, it'll be interesting. Once these lines clash, it'll be epic. Absolutely epic. Yeah. Right now, Archon playing it very tentatively. And uh, we will see if he's able to bring this back into his favor or not. Oh, here we go. Grenades sending off the first volley, it looks like. Oh, come on, grenades. Oh, they really came out, of course. Yeah, right they... Yeah, That's they, King Volley, yeah. This King Volley did quite a lot of damage to them. Probably would have oh, liked to have seen that initial volley taken by the Pistoliers, but sorry, what was that, bud? Luckily, the grenades did not lose a model, though, so they still are at full firing capacity, despite losing maybe 20% uh, health. Well, that firing capacity is all that matters. You need to see those little chameleons and uh, skin cohort get blown up by the grenades. Indeed, indeed. Now, uh, Arkin is being very conservative with his fire here, just, you know, firing a shot off here or there. And, uh, you really have to make the most of it. I mean, he almost needs every single pistolier to shoot in to some of these, uh, cold one nights and horn ones to really, uh, really make an impact yeah just so much AP I mean armored units for the lizardmen is just yeah 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 I do worry about the lizardmen chances here I mean the empire chances here um, but mostly I'm just yeah I guess I'm curious to see what he's going to try to do because it seems like his skirmishing is being effectively countered just by the skink or and the chameleon skinks um, yeah, every every thirty seconds he tries to get a volley off, and yeah. Yeah, it just exactly. seems like he's yeah. taking more yeah. damage in return than he's dishing out. So, yeah, I'm just wondering what his plan B is going to be if this skirmishing just doesn't end up working out for him like it is. Indeed, and I, yeah, I wonder if he's a bit frustrated by the presence of all these missiles from the Empire. I mean, the Lizardman front line is just a skirmish army that you know is. Can't seize the initiative with the yeah. skirmish. Now we, uh. Okay, Arkin does need to attack a bit more here. He's being, uh, li he's being just a bit too passive. Uh, I'll, I don't know. It's, it might be okay. He's attacking now. It's attacking now. Don't worry. But it, it is, uh. Yeah. Oh, here we go. That was a nice volley. That was, that was really a nice. very nice volley from the grenade launcher. He's getting quite a lot of damage in, bringing him down to nearly 50%. Yeah, I kind of like the synergy there. The, uh,. It's like the Pistoliers tank the shots and the grenades get the damage down, though. Yeah. It's like he's getting chased into a corner here. Could be a bad place for the, uh, really em any Empire State troops. They want to stay away from the side since the Lizards have the, uh, the higher leadership. They should be able to just drop them back. Oh, here we go. There we go. Massive charge. Beautiful. So, the Demi shouldn't be able to get away from the horned ones here since they have, uh, complete equal speed. Oh, here we go. I think this is either a Dwellers. Oh, Dwellers oh, below! Dwellers. I'm gonna come oh, down and do a massive. lot of damage. This is a beautiful Dwellers and a beautiful play. It's kind of baiting out this engagement, though it seems seems like a bit of wash. Look at the, uh, the Lizards and the Empire about taking equal damage. Yeah, it looks like it actually got the M Demogriff Knights in that Earth, um, Dwellers below as well, I think. You know, it only takes one model oh, yeah. touching it to do the damage, and now there's yeah. a big break. Yep. If, uh, and as well, I'm, uh, I want to say, as the Demis took about equal damage as the Raptors there, Empire really came out worse since they don't have as many melee troops. The rest of the Red Crescent Skinks and the Croc Scores just wore them down, and I don't know if there's anywhere for the Empire to really go. All this uh, non AP shot, all this AP on the field for the Lizardmen, and here we go. Carno's getting on uh, Carl. Clash of yeah. uh, champions here. And Carl does one aim that he's pulling out. Oh, look at that, though. He's right back at it. Carl going right after him. It's always over. 
Oh, Soros Oldblood needs to be careful. He's not supported right now. Looks like he's got reinforcements coming in, but until he gets those reinforcements, he's in a precarious position. Yeah, he's taking massive damage. Looks like an Earth Blood just came down. His horn one's just the uh, O'Cobble Riders. I'm starting to rampage. Now he's trying to just run for his life here. Maybe uh, the Empire can, you know, gain some uh, some ground here and try and work their way back in this battle as the Lizards have taken a slight advantage of the power. power of the and, uh, oh, no. I'll throw a Crip Bikes at Shadow. That's massive. And look at Carl. Carl France getting and, a cold one. <laughs> and now a couple horned ones in the mix. You know, he's just not having a good day. Looks like Carl Franz will die, and that's going to be a GG for the Empire once Carl Franz is dead. But oh, is he going to get back up in the air? Yeah, beautiful play with these pistoliers to try and free him up, though. Uh, yeah. See, I think they need to be left in comp. Um, well, you almost have to sack them. Yeah, like, the pistoliers should have just been sacked. Well, regardless, Carl will get back up. Well, the Manticore is going to chase him off the map, though, I think. Oh, wow, yeah. That was an yeah. excellent timing here. Yeah, I don't see Carl coming back um, as long as that Manticore keeps chasing him. His leadership is starting to come up, but... Yeah. Yes, though, uh, since the Jade Wizard doesn't have regrowth, Earthbloods will only be able to kind of trickle back Carl's HP and... Although, look at this, there are many raptors on the field left for the, uh, the dinos. Yeah, there goes Carl right off the yeah. map, and Balance of Powers, I think, telling the story. Yeah, absolutely. As these pistolers shoot, uh, funny enough, the chain route will most likely hit in just, uh, yeah, maybe just seconds here, just moments. Which I always think is a bit comical, when the units expend ammo and the game's lost. <laughs> it's a... Uh, it's a funny mechanic, but uh, it mm -hmm. seems accurate. Well, uh, I mean, now what's Archon doing? <laughs> I'm not sure, but it, yeah, it's uh, I don't know. What is he doing? I don't know. No. I think now he's just being salty and mad. Yeah, we might have a little Benny Hill moment for you for a sec, or we'll just uh, hop out to the next semifinal if it goes on for much longer. But yeah, I think I'm just gonna call it from here. Again, it's like just, uh, I'm gonna say it's oh here we go. There's an Earth Blood, but it seems like an odd choice, you know, just so much non-AP shot against a Lizardman army, as well. As, I think going with the uh, full kite army is uh, I don't know, it can just be a bit risky against the lizards. All right, I think let's go on to the next match. I made the wrong call with the routing units last battle, but I'm going to call that a victory for the Lizardmen, and we're going to move on with our lives. Sorry, chat. I, I'm sure that wasn't the best adminning on my part with some of the rules there, but at this point, I don't really feel like dealing with him anymore. So Falcon yep. won, and uh, good game to Falcon. We will see who comes out on top between Dig Big Ch Big Dick Chief and Aerocrastic. Oh, <laughs> God damn it, Big Dick Chief. <laughs> yeah, moving right along, everybody. And here we go into the next map, which is Chief versus Aerocrastic. Oops, yes, and the one. Fall of Man, a uh, beautiful map, which mm -hmm. really provide a very interesting engagement. The Lizards, the Lizards are trying to go right up this hill. Will they go straight up the hill? Will they try and approach on the flank? Uh, we will see. We will see. I don't know, but yeah, Skaven, when it comes down to uh, options for artillery deployment, you don't find maps much better than this one. So I'm curious to see how they deploy their warp lock gazelles, warp lining cannons, anything they may have brought. Because there's just so many avenues of fire here. Yeah, absolutely. Should have no problem with line of sight on this map. Mm hmm. And uh, yeah, perhaps they'll get the damage done they need before the uh, Lizardmen's clash and start chopping up some rats. Now, uh, would you like to take the Skaven army, or shall I take the... Um, you the go ahead and army. grab this. You go ahead and grab the Skaven, sir. You might want to cover it quick before you start spreading it around. <laughs> and I think uh, we'll be able to do just that. It looks like it's just a ton of rats. Nothing special, nothing fancy. Just a ton of rats. Looks like we're going to have 
Yeah, four. Gave in. Yeah. So it looks like we have four Skaven Slave Spears, max five clan rats, one of them being the ROR, clan Vulcan tail slashers. As well, we do have three clan rat spears to back up the front line, and a whole host of standard Skaven Slaves as well. Four of those, so just a ton of cheap rats. They are backed up by four rat ogres. And for the weapons team, we just have the Natty Boo Boo Sharpshooters. Almost an odd clue in many Skaven armies, and uh, perhaps the best name of any ROR, Natty Boo Boo. <laughs> and uh, now for the leadership, we do have two assassins with the standard kits. Slippery, concealment bomb, trophy heads. And we have a gray seer of plague on the doom bell. When this thing chimes 13 times, rattles and rhymes, you know your life is on the line. And now we have warpstone scroll to uh, keep flyers in place. Urban tide, plus with fail. And that is it. And of course, unholy clamor, the bound ability. And uh, yeah, what has the Lizman brought for us? That is a great question, Falcon. Let's go ahead and take a look. So, over here for the Lizman, we're going to have Skink Cohort on the far left flank with some red crested skink. Appears to be three red crested skinks, one of them being the Cohort of Sotek. We're going to have some Saurus Warriors with shields, as well as the Legion Shock Regiment renowned Saurus Warriors with that missile resistance ability. Um, they have two Skink Cohort with javelins, as well as unit of cold one riders a unit of cold one or two units of cold one riders he is going to have a Sora scar vet on top of a carnosaur that guy is going to be bringing with him nothing besides the uh plaque of dominion and then he's going to have lord miles de mundi over here with the bound banishment on top of his great triceratops slack with the shield of the old ones arcane unforging apotheosis um as well as nothing else besides greater arcane conduit okay so, Lizardman approaching, going right for the Skaven, up to that hill. And uh, what are you thinking so far? I mean, the Natty Boo Boo Sharpshooter is getting some good damage on top of Mazda. Yeah, indeed. It just seems uh, there's not much withering fire that's going to be put down. And with these dinos in the front line, all these skinks, the superior infantry. Uh, yeah. These dinos might just run all over the Skaven force. Just such a uh, superior arm in the tree across the line. Uh, unless they can get the damage done. Yeah. But it's a good formation. I like, uh, you know, they have a few layers here in their build. Uh, they'll be mm -hmm. able to retreat to the, the higher ground. Maybe even uh, force an engagement in the choke point. Indeed, yeah. I mean, I like the Skaven army a lot here in terms of, like, the tiered layers it has here. And, you know, on the far left engagement, they're on top of the cohort of Sotek, and they're doing very well, about to wipe them off. And then that's going to create a very big threat for the Lizardmen if they can get this line enveloped from the left flank. Absolutely. Though now it seems uh, the flanks have, a bit, have been traded as the left flank for the uh, rats mm -hmm. have shattered, but quickly rats are pouring in to uh, seal the gap. And, uh, yeah, prevent this Lizardman uh, low from just smashing through the lines. And it's a very nice play. Slaying the Lizardman pretty much just... Yeah, their advance has just about been halted here. And the Rat Ogres, for the most part, are in decent health. And now, as the Mooney's in a bad place, the Assassins are going after him. Rival High Talisman has been popped, and look at that. He has no stats at all. Oh, no. Over here, I'm just watching some cohort of Sotek right now. <laughs> They had it pop. They had 36 models and like 300 HP, but now they're dying. Meanwhile, well, Mazda Mundi pulling back out, and uh, looks like he's going to live to fight another day and do a nice side charge into uh, this Skaven line, but unfortunately the Rat Ogres there are going to stop him dead in his tracks. Yeah, the Rat Ogre play has been pretty on point. I'd say they're crashing through the lines. They're retreating, trying to yeah. cover the flanks here and there. Yeah, I'd absolutely we'll agree. I, I really need to see the Skaven pull through. Their cohort of Zotek have been holding back four units for such a long time. 
Yeah, that was uh, perhaps one lapse there. Yeah. Those yeah. rats needed to get around the flank and try. Yeah. Get a this... good rear charge at some of these stores. But, uh, yeah, it seems the user advance is really halted here. And yeah. And Skaven are in an excellent spot with the balance of power in the field. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. And I mean, like, nothing here to shut down the Natibubu sharpshooters. We have the Cold One Riders desperately trying to work around the back lines, but there's just so much Skaven chaff in this build to where I think the Lizardmen are just having a really hard time, hard time trying to get through it. And there's just so many rats that my frame rate is dropping dramatically. <laughs> oh, man. Say what? There were, I mean, I think they've counted summons as well, so it's, it's a bit inflated. But currently there are 2,000 rats on Oh my god. <laughs> it was just a cool yeah. 3,000 they started with. Goodness gracious. This is what happens when you have thousands upon thousands of rats in the game, chat. It's just rat madness. Race here getting the, uh, targeted by the source. Yeah, and uh, in turn, the rat ogres are chasing down Mass Moody. It's like both players going after the lords, they see it either as a clinching uh, effort in their victory, or perhaps a comeback mechanic. Because this, con oh yeah, this Carno, oh no, Assassin's Trophy going down, lowering his melee stats, perhaps he won't be able to select his race here. So oh see. yeah, Carno stats down to 23 and 13, oh man, yeah, Carno's about to start routing. Looks like the chain route's going down and the rats are going to take out the Lizardmen in this first round of a best of five. Oh man, pretty solid victory I'd say. Felt like that kind of uh, went according to the Skaven plan. Yeah, absolutely, I would agree. And like I said prior, I'll, I'll say it again, I think uh, Lizard Man is an odd choice over uh, Arrow's Tomb Kings. Maybe he wanted to save them for a later game, but mm -hmm. regardless, it seems like a much more difficult matchup. And yeah, that's a lot of rats. 26, 25. Yeah. That's a lot of rats. Definitely a lot of <laughs> rats. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That was a pretty rough battle. I feel like the tar pit was just so real. The lizardmen ran forward. And it's like they just hit a sand pit. And just like we're trying to get out of it while they're just getting shot full of Natty Booper sharpshooter rounds. And uh, it's amazing how quickly they can just chip away at the health of somebody like Mazda Moody with such a huge HP pool. But without further ado, let's load into this. See Air Krastic versus BBB Chief in the second round of this best of five. And uh, we'll take it from there. <laughs> Romley got distracted by an ice cream truck. Yeah, he ran away. He's gone now. <laughs> uh, guys, I still can't get out of my head that last match. I'm still just thinking about it. But whatever. Whatever. I just don't like it because I don't want it to feel like I tainted Falcon's victory. Who let the Romulan out? I don't know, man. Nobody should let him out. That's dangerous. He's a public nuisance. All right, Malekith versus Orion. Wood Elves versus Dark Elves. Aerocrastic versus Chief. Round two. Ba-da-ba-ba. We got the Hippie Elves versus the Edgy Elves. Master your taint. Whoa, Hadres. Shots fired. And here we are. I'm going to start off with the Wood Elf Army here. And, uh, take a... Excuse me. A look at La Gran Pinga's army. We are going to see in his ejército two units... Oh, sorry. One unit of Way Watchers, one unit of Deep Wood Scouts with the Swift Shiver Shards as we were discussing before the battle begun. He is then going to have two, five Eternal Guard, um, none of them with shields. He is going to have three Dryads as well. Now, rounding out the army for mobility, we are going to see three Wild Riders. These guys are very fast, cause fear, and are absolutely devastating against lightly armed units, armored units. Um, now, for the leadership, I think that is what we're on to. Now, we are going to see, not Orion, unfortunately, we're going to see a Branch Wraith here with... 
Melikos, Mystifying Miasma, Earthblood, Call of the Wood, as well as the Scroll of Shielding and uh, Shadow and Mirrors. And then we are going to see a Glade Lord over here. Sorry, it's kind of hard to get over. Uh, with Net of Mintok, or sorry, not Net of Mintok, uh, Prey of Anathrema um, on top of her to pin units in place. So, taking a look at the Dark Elves, because I don't know what happened to Dromulan. Did he say he was going somewhere and I just missed it? He's not even in the Co-Caster chat anymore. Is he online anymore? Did he lose internet? He's not even in here anymore. I think Romlin crashed, so it's just me in here, chat. I apologize. For the Dark Elves, we're going to have four Black Art Corsairs with hand bows. Uh, we are then going to see some Dark Riders, as well as the Selenesh's Harvesters, Regiment Renowned Doomfire Warlocks. Backing this up, we're going to see a healthy number of Dark Riders. It appears to be two. Two Black Art and Nagrond. We're going to have a, a Sorceress of Death here with Spirit Leech, as well as the da -da 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 Dark Star Cloak. And then we are going to have the one, the only, Malekith. I'm going to be riding his cold one into battle with Gaze of Malice, Stand Your Ground, as well as Soul Stealer, Chill Wind, and Word of, not Pain, sorry, Power of Darkness, and the Circlet of Iron to increase that miscast percentage for his opponent. Does that Warhorn not sound like a big fart noise? <laughs> It kind of does. Okay, so Wood Elf's going to initially begin skirmishing. And the Way Watcher's going to make some very nice damage on top of the Black Orc Corsairs. Black Orc Corsairs do have some decent armor up at 80. Um, but, you know, for a Way Watcher, that's absolutely nothing at all. Deepwood Scouts do not have magical, I mean, armor-piercing damage, but the magical damage is nice nonetheless. Alright, Cold One Cherry is pushing forward in the forest, but going to turn out last second. Change their mind about that engagement. Meanwhile, we're going to see some Dark Riders and the Salonashi Harvesters continuing into the forest. There's Dryads in there, but Dryads probably won't enjoy that combat too much. However, of course, they do have a bonus. Gaze of Malice going off. Looks like it's going to whiff it just a bit. Not going to quite land on top of the Dryads. But now, keeping that higher level view, we're going to take... You know, keep an eye on what the players are doing for their deployment here. Cold One Chariots were diving through the Eternal Guard, doing some good work. But now, we have the Wild Riders diving on top of those guys too. Um, dishing out some good damage as they pull back, but the uh, Blackheart Corsairs with Hambos are shooting down um, rounds on top of them, and a Spirit Leech just hit those Wild Riders too, so some damage being done. Nicely played by the Dark Elves here. Alright, Aerocrastic going to continue skirmishing very well here. It looks like he's trying to bring some Dark Riders through the gap, but the Wild Riders are going to come right back down here and counter that movement. And yeah, Dark Riders, no match whatsoever for uh, Wild Riders. Over here, going to see the Dark Elves continue to fl um, shift these guys out further and further around the flank, looking to find an opportunity to come back into the back lines for the Wood Elves, it would appear. And then, meanwhile, the Wood Elves have completely mopped up the right flank of the Dark Elves. And I have to say, Eric Krastic must be feeling the pressure now, because once the Wood Elves can get around here... That's going to create a huge uh, weak point for the Dark Elf army. Over here, we're going to see... <laughs> wow. Dark Riders diving into some Wild Riders here. Um, quite a brave choice, but the Wild Riders, I imagine, will come out on top. They're going to start pulling around, and one of the Dark Riders is going to start wavering and possibly routing um, as the Wild Riders begin to pursue. Gaze of Malice going down here. Once again, going to whip it. Not going to get very good damage done there, unfortunately. Meanwhile, Blackguard and Nagaron making quick work of the Wild Riders. Um, and now they're in combat with some Dryads. And uh, we'll see how they fare there. I think Blackguard and Nagaron are going to outclass any of the Wood Elf, Wood Elf infantry here by quite a long shot. Dryads getting charged by the Dark Riders, who are then going on to the Deepwood Scouts. A nice choice there, shutting down a very threatening units um, from firing anymore. 
but the Dark Elf backline has, I mean, sorry, the Wood Elf backline has been compromised now. As we see uh, Slaneshi Harvesters, some Dark Riders coming in here. Um, apparently these Way Wild Riders are having a hard time. And now we're going to see the Doomfire Warlocks getting a huge rear charge on top of all these Dryads. Way our Wild Riders back here are getting on top of Black Art Corsairs with Hambos. That's going to be bad news bears for the Dark Elves. So Power of Darkness is being popped for the Supreme Sorceress of Fire or of Death. She's taking damage and may start routing actually, uh, especially with all these Wild Riders nearby. Wild Riders will be able to take care of her very, very quickly, so she needs to be careful about Malekith coming over to help support. You know, trying to get a higher level view of what's going on in the battle now. It looks like the Wood Elves have begun to shift and pivot their lines a little bit here. You see we have some Eternal Guard and um, Archers pulling back over onto this side of the battlefield, trying to fire and get some damage done to these very threatening Dark Elf units. Um, Doomfire Warlocks, where the hell are you? I see one model here, it says there's 34 of you. There's a flag. Where are the rest of you? But like really though, where are the rest of the Doomfire Warlocks? <laughs> what a mystery guys. Let me know if you've seen them. Uh, Dryad's chasing down the Black Art of Nagarond, getting some nice rear damage on top of them as they try to pull up, but now they're going to turn around and get into combat. Cold One Chariots are coming forward, getting Prey of Anathramid in place, and that should be just enough time for the Waywatchers to kill them off completely. Uh, there's the rest of the Saneshi Harvesters. For some reason, their Flag Bearer was just out of position, I guess. Um, looks like he was killed and a new Flag Bearer selected. <laughs> But here we go, the Dark Elves finally starting to exploit some gaps, shift the balance of power in their favor, and, you know, it's anybody's game at this point. It looks like the Dark Elves have done a good job of neutralizing uh, the Wild Riders, surprisingly, so well done there. And uh, the caster's still alive, so I want to see that Dark Elf caster get over here and start helping out with some of those Soul Stealers, but... Malekith is nearby, and uh, he is quite a capable melee lord himself, and now he's getting on top of the Glade Lord, and I imagine we'll make quick work of the Glade Lord, who is not nearly as capable in melee combat as he is. Yeah, I mean, at this point of the battle, it's very, very dead even. Wood Elves keep on bringing it back into their favor um, with the balance of power. That Wood Elves look like they have an infantry advantage at this point. But, you know, the Dark Elves look like they have the mobility advantage because of the Slaneshi Harvester still being around. Um, Slaneshi Harvesters, with their physical resistance, are a very nice unit and uh, able to counter the Wild Riders quite well, it would seem. Meanwhile, over here, we're going to see a lot of the Wood Elves start bunching up on top of Malekith, but I think that's exactly what Malekith wants at this stage of the fight. Because um, if Malekith gets a big, fat Soul Stealer on top of these guys, he can really, really punish this blob. And there goes that Soul Stealer that I was just speaking of. Will it get there on top of the Dryads? No, it will not. But, oh, Soul Stealer is so painful. Going to be healing Malekith right back up. And just look at the damage it's dishing out to a lot of these units here. Balance of power going to shift back in his favor after that. But over here, we're going to see the Slaneshi Harvesters getting routed. They're down to six models. Malekith just slapping some Dryads with his Velociraptor's tail. And yeah, looking across the map, you know, trying to get an idea of what the Dark Elves have left. It looks like a couple Black Art Corsair Hambos. This unit is actually quite healthy, so I'm sure he's glad he has that in his back pocket. Because Malekith is going to need all the help he can get against this huge number of Wood Elf infantry. Mm, yeah, don't see anything else on the field of battle. I mean, 
it's funny that we see Wood Elf infantry being so important in so many battles today, even though typically you don't think about infantry when you think about the Wood Elves. Alright, there go the Dryads trying to chase down these Black Art Corsairs, but the Hambos are firing into them. And now we're going to see Malekith getting pinned in place by a lot of units. And this time, I don't think he wants to get surrounded by a lot of units because I don't think he has the magic left to pop off another Soul Stealer. So we will see what happens. Melikos Mystify Miasma hitting down these Black Orc Corsairs with Hambos doing quite a lot of work. And Malekith able to jump out and get a nice rear charge on top of these Waywatchers and Deepwood Scouts. Um, Black Orc Corsairs are going to pull back out and start shooting behind their backs as they pull out. Malekith surrounded by a lot of enemy forces. If he has enough magic, and that's a big if, he has enough magic for another Soul Stealer, I think this battle could be his, but I just don't see it after all the magic we've already seen so far in the battle today. Uh, saw some Chill Winds, saw some Soul Stealer, I mean Spirit Leeches, already saw a Soul Stealer. So, gonna be very curious to see if the Dark Elves from Aerocrasta can pull this out or if Chief is gonna take this second round in a 2-0 lead. There go the Wood Elf Archers. Oh, just kidding. The Way Watchers look like they're stabilizing. And uh, yeah, Malekith is just getting chipped away. He's trying to pull out desperately, but it's just not working well for him. He's getting pinned in place. There's too many models around him. And uh, yeah, the more he tries to pull out, the more damage he takes from those rear charges. And uh, yeah, it's just not going well for him. It looks like Malekith is going to just... A little too late. Yeah, too short, too late. All right, not what I meant to say. Not too short, too late. Too little, too late is that phrase. My apologies. <laughs> Pull out always goes deep. Yeah, roll Mara. That was a tough one. Yeah. Very good game to Legrand Pinga. Um, played that very, very well. And Aerocrastic really brought it back into his corner in the late game there. And, you know, may not like Blackguard and Nagron, but boy, oh boy, did they get some good kills. Um, same with Malekith there. Malekith, absolute MVP. And these two coming in as important units too, but... Looking at his army, I, I liked the versatility here. 71 kills on the Deepwood Switchover Shards. Very nice to deal with Slaneshi Harvesters, things like that, who have physical resistance. He had a Way Watcher to deal with the heavily armored units. Um, and then just a lot of units to help um, slow down the advance of the Dark Elf. So with these mobility units, which are absolutely key in dealing with Dark Riders and the Cold One Chariot. So great game to BBB Chief. And uh, we're going to move on to the third round of this best of five between Chief and Aerocrastic. Are you a rapper? Yep, in my spare time, that's all I do. Well, I never would have guessed it, but now I yep, can't I, see I rap, anything else. I wrap gifts. I wrap gifts. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> just a bad joke. Oh, here just we go. Just a bad joke on a Sunday. Hey, Sundays are for bad jokes. Also, I'm a dad, so I specialize in bad jokes. It's kind of what dads do. Oh, uh, there you go. Dad jokes. Hey, if you're not telling, yeah, if you're not telling bad jokes, what are you even doing? You know. Hey guys, you know so, I used to not like beards, but it grew on me. Wow. Oh wow. <laughs> this army here, I really love Arrow's army here. All right, well let's see it, man. Go over Arrow's army, and you know I'm fingers crossed. I want Arrow to bring this back and. Uh, Show everybody why he's one of the greatest players in the game right now, but, you know, the first two battles go in Chief's way. So, what did this game even got for us, though? Yes, and we have some murmurs in chat of an ROR Doom Wheel. Well, maybe, maybe you will see it. But anyway, starting with the Infantry Corps. I, I can't kill that we have the standard Skaven Slaves. Now, we have just three standard Skaven Slaves, as well as... Two Skaven Slave Spears. We have 
two clan rats with spears. Two standard clan rats. As well, we have a very strong infantry core of three storm vermin, sword and shield, which can prove very useful against the, uh, the green skin onslaught. <laughs> Their high armor and high model count. And good melee defense. Now, for the weapons team. This is really the, uh, the beautiful part of this army. We have two warp fire throwers, and I just absolutely love this unit. It is so much fun, and it's maybe not the best unit in some cases, but versus uh, low armored units, they can absolutely roast them, and the green fire is beautiful. Now we do have one death blow bombardier. Put in some AP missile. And to back all this up, we have two rat ogres. And the ROR doom wheel. And for the leadership, we have Grey Seer Plague, Standard Kit, Arcane Conduit, Vermintide, plus with Phil, Pestilent Breath. And uh, that rounds out the Skaven Army. What has the Green Skin brought to deal with this rat army, my son? Well, let's go ahead and take a peek. So for the Green Skins, looks like we're going to have four units of Gabos. He's going to have some Orc, boars, um, orc Boys up front. Nice um, low tier infantry that I think is pretty cost effective against Skaven. He's going to have two units of Biggins. Um, and I actually lied, make that four units of Orc Biggins. Um, he's going to have the Warlords boys and the AP Gloonies in there as well. Uh, for his ranged contingent, he's going to have the Rusty Errors as well as some Savage Orc Error boys. And they will be backed up by two Forest Goblin Spider Riders as well as a single unit of Trolls with one Pip of Veterancy. Um, he's also going to have some um, Forest Scout and Spider Riders Vanguard deployed in the rear of the Skaven Formation. And then last but certainly not least, we got Azag the Slaughterer with Wa, Foe Seeker, Spirit Leech, and Life Leeching. So, Greenskin Army, a rather large, full of a lot of pretty low tier units. And I have to say, Romulan, um, the Skaven Infantry here could prove to be overwhelming for the Lizardmen. Like... The Storm Burma with Sword and Shield, I think, are going to outclass most of the infantry here. Um, Boar Boy Biggin, I mean, the Orc Boar, I mean, the Orc Biggins should be able to do okay, but still not going to win that combat. Indeed, as what, well. and with the follow up from the Doom Wheel, could mm -hmm. make short work of them, and there's not much to really counter the Doom Wheel. Yeah. It may uh, all come down to the, the Azag play. Yeah, I was going to say. There are many units to uh, counter him, because, yeah, these, these Storm Vermin. This massive rats here could just rip through the greenskins as well. Look at the greenskin line; it's very spread out. Indeed. And, yeah, uh, I think the unless green. Unless they can. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, look at this. Looks like uh, Arrow's trying to spearhead here, and he's going to take advantage of this spread out formation and this uh, little lapse here. You may try and route a goblin here, or uh, maybe see some of these orc biggins and get a free unit. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll see what happens. And it looks like Azag's trying to give a wide berth to the Wheels of Doom because he doesn't want to get shot by its very high damage missile. Um, but yeah, I think Azag, Forest Goblin, Spider Riders, and Trolls are going to be the tools that the Greenskins really need to utilize to deal with this Doom Wheel. Yeah, we'll see. That first uh, Spirit Leech from Azag went down on Rado, which is uh, not a choice, I think. It needs to go on the Lord or the Doom Wheel. Yeah, I agree. It didn't even kill models, so I was kind of confused by yeah. that targeting. Yeah, but here we go. It's a uh, nice little route here. Easy win of uh, a single goblin. And this follow up from the sport. I mean, I think he should have gone for it with the uh, spiders there and try to at least grab a couple ogres. Yeah, I agree. Them as they try to run back on to their lines and. Uh, well, it looks like he's catching yeah, one now he, ogre, now he maybe. Can't. Yeah, but he can't now because the uh, Globadiers are getting in range. And, oh, yeah, yeah. He smartly pulls out. That was a good move. Yeah, very good call. And, I mean, the green skins look like they're just pivoting their lines so wide. <laughs> the Skaven have just completely, like, moved counterclockwise and traded spots almost with the green skins now. In some cases, this this can be good, you know, approach from multiple angles, try and smash through, but yeah. if you have this many orcs, I mean, you kind of want to hit as a unified force, and being this spread out against Skaven, who are faster than many of these orcs on the field, because yeah. they can just, you know, approach one flank and take advantage of this strategy right here, and yeah. turn against you. Here we go, Azag's coming down the Doom Wheel, but yeah, look at this. Right to the Death Globes, but... Oh, good micro there, pulling out before anything yeah. could be done, so... Yeah, very nice Azag play for sure. 
indeed. I think uh, that's uh, the real key for the green skin victory here. If Azag can be used effectively, take out some key targets. As well as the trolls. As we said earlier, if they can get some work done. But here we go. Looks like a nice concave formed by the greenskins. Yeah. And they're taking uh, this hill, which is a nice move. Yeah, I definitely like this decision now because the greenskins pivoted and getting that nice concave, as he pointed out. And Force Goblin Spider Riders moving around to threaten the rear, too. And uh, one thing I'll say is this. the greenskins oh, love green, but they don't love green fire. Ouch. That's right, my son. And, oh, goodness. These goblins are just getting roasted, and that must smell awful. It, but it must be glorious for the rats, and I'm sure they'll eat them uh, all the less. Oh, yeah. Uh, so they, uh, they're hungry, hungry rats. And it looks like uh, they're about to get to work here as the lines are about to clash. Oh, look, the trolls are trying to go after the Doom Wheel. Oh, this that's... Be a bait onto the, this could be a bait for the, the Death Blows. We'll see. We'll see indeed, yeah. yeah bless, bless with Phil has gone down on the Doom Wheel. I like that. Adding poison to a very nice stat line from the ROR. I think it just zaps us right up. Just yeah, I mean, right now the greenskins uh, looking like. I don't know, they're closing the gap, but I feel like the warp fire throwers have just dished out so much damage, just deleting multiple units of goblins, and I, I fear that the greenskins may not have enough meat in their army to uh, get through the Skaven forces on the field. And as they try to advance, they're just getting. Oh, yeah. It's, and you just heard the bell go off for the Skaven. they just ripping apart these goblins. The uh, Rad Ogres are terrorized oh, by there Kazag, we go. and that could, be, uh, that could be huge if they can push this flank advantage and get into the weapons teams. And... That was a huge, huge break uh, for Chief yeah. right there. Indeed. But he needs to uh, capitalize here and keep pushing the advantage go right after the main targets here. As, uh, he's actually starting to... Occupy the back lines. Or at least, uh, putting some pressure on them. Yeah. He has the, uh, he has the opportunities if he can just get in these holes in the escape of lines. But he's kind of, uh, yeah, not taking advantage right now where he needs to. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to look around the battle to get a, a read on what is going down. And, uh, yeah, to be honest, it's like... Looks like the Greenskins are doing good work on the peripheries over there with Azag and the Trolls, but when I'm looking at the center, I'm just seeing so much damage being done to all of the Greenskin forces. The Warlord's boys just got pulverized by a Plague Rash along with the Doomwheel diving in, and, you know, it just looks like the Greenskin infantry across the field is getting taken care of. I mean, the Warp Fire Throwers are untouched, the Poison Wind Globadiers are untouched, and uh, it just seems to me that the Skaven's key units are still in the field, whereas the Greenskin's units are quickly disappearing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And with Azag and the trolls on that flank, which they stayed for far too long, they need to get you know right into these uh, weapons teams. Yeah. Because as you said, they've just you know, been putting on too much work. All these storm vermin hold strong and just chop through those gobos. Yeah, look at this. It seems the Skaven are really just in a, a great spot now. Yeah. And uh, I think they're just going to yeah, coast on the back of these uh, Warp Fire Throwers and the Doom Wheel to victory. Yeah, Where there's really trolls? nothing that's going to force the Skaven's hand here. They can take the rest of this battle at whatever pace they feel is appropriate. Because, yep. you know, you got the Grace here, you got the Doom Wheel, and you still have plenty of Warp Fire. You can just blob up on infantry or send a single entity into infantry and then shoot them down with fire. Ooh, but nice micro coming here from BB Chief. I don't know if you saw that Savage Orc Airboy come in and then pull out and make the warp fire completely miss their shot. Yeah, it was a nice little matrix dodge by the uh, Savage Orcs there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That warp fire. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. It's a really tough spot unless they can, you know, use Ags at just like a couple key targets once again. But it just seems too little too late. Yeah. I would agree with that. I mean, and now Azag's diving into combat, but there's no friendly units nearby, so I think uh, that last act of desperation will probably spell defeat for the Greenskins. Yeah, there's a final wog pop. It will just be the show. Azag's taking a lot of damage here, so it seems. 
Yeah. And is Howley Warp go on there? No, just kidding. That's no, a. No. Well, that's a. Yeah. yeah, Plague. My bad. Yeah, it's an interesting pick. I think it's uh, something you'd often see in this matchup. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, Arrow just going with Bell, and I think he's just trying to be a true uh, representative of the Council of Thirteen. Chiming the Great Bell, and here, you, once again, you hear it rattle and roll. Indeed, you, you see do. It's taking its toll. <laughs> this even win. Well, it's. I guess uh, it's not quite there. But, oh, a nice little uh, Spirit Leech going down. But yeah, I, I think it's just the writing's on the wall. Yeah, I agree with you, and I mean, I'm glad to see Eric Krastic bringing this back, making it a good series, so he's going to claw his way back into this best of five and make it 1-2. Absolutely. Oh, I didn't realize the Rusty Errors had been untouched this entire battle. Impressive. Well. Not anymore. <laughs> You say that now, Warp Fire is coming for them, and... Oh, no, it's, uh... It's kind of janky with some of the Warp Fire, but still. Yeah, there yeah it looks like it hit its maximum range and then just petered out. Yeah. I wonder if it touched them and gave the debuff, nonetheless, and helped the, uh... The, the Rock go down. Them as, yeah. That was a very valuable unit. You know, funny enough, that was probably anchoring the power bar for the green skins. I think it's just moments away from the chain route. Ooh, fire oh. <laughs> oh wow. Want some roasted wyvern. Definitely want some roasted wyvern. Tastes like chicken, I hear. Yeah, man. It's good stuff, and look at that. Just beautiful warm fire coming down. Yeah, Dude, I mean, real doing its thing. Overall, just a beautiful game to Eric Krastic. I think he he played that very very well. Um, I liked Chief's army, but yeah. Eric Krastic had some style points with all these warp fire throwers for sure. Yeah, Eric Krastic, very good skaven player, and uh, yeah, he just uh, a very good army. He's gonna be really tough for that. It's gonna be and there we go. There's the I love concession. the warp fire. I just love the warp fire pick. I think it it can actually work pretty well against green skins like you saw there. Mm -hmm. Often uh, you don't see them though with the other weapons teams. But just beautifully done here. 125 kills on a warp fire thrower. Very well done. Indeed, indeed. And they're just, uh, not only is the damage nice, but the leadership debuff they do against a faction like Greenskins is quite valuable. Um, yeah. Really useful in helping make those routes all the easier for the Doom Wheel when it comes rolling yeah. through. Mm -hmm, exactly. And they just look great. Yes. Right. But uh, yeah, these uh, Death Glow Bombardiers actually with 192 kills. That is yeah. no small amount. Yeah. Yeah, I was just looking at the warp fire throwers and I saw those. Oh, wow. 125, 46, 192. Like, yeah. Two or three units you don't really think about too often. Well, I mean, two units, but there was three of them. So the warp fire throwers and the death globe bombardiers, especially the death globe bombardiers, I don't see very often. Um, I imagine they're yep. quite good against black orcs or anything like that with very heavy armor. Yeah, they just do massive damage. Uh... They're, they're really a great unit. Their uh, damage output can just about rival a, a Rattling Gun. It's just uh, they don't have the range or the, yeah. uh, the synergy with the suppression. Mm -hmm. So often the Rattlings are just picked, but, uh, you know, pick a couple of them. Even against Stowie with their, uh, I believe they have uh, magic damage. But still, they can just shred everything. And with 110 or 120 armor, but regardless, very heavily armored. They can take any sort of withering fire or even some sort of chaff. And usually just run away and throw some more, some more globes. And they yep. look great too, you know, just like so many of the Skaven's weapon, weapons teams. But yeah. Whenever Aircraft uh, plays Skaven, he makes even the worst weapon team look OP. I guess that's the telltale sign of a great player, <laughs> making bad units look good. But let's indeed. throw up that match intro card here. We got Aircraft versus Chief, round four. This would be the first match that went to a fifth round in the entire top eight playoffs. Can you believe it? My goodness. My goodness. And here we go. We're about to load in. Very nice. <gasps> Excuse me. All right. 
I can go ahead and grab those beastie boys if you want to grab the Skaven again, or do you want to do the beastie boys and I can do the Skaven? Oh, he was fine. I can go with these bad boys. Alright, well, that's... There are quite a few of them. Yeah, take it away for the rat boys. Looks like, once again, we have four game slave spears. We have four standard clan rats. We have four clan rats with spears. Oh, actually, you make that five clan rats with spears. It is just another mass of rats, my son. And five standard scaven slaves, so really very similar to the last army we've seen. And, Indeed. uh, yeah, you know what? It's, the, it's like the exact same list. It's the exact same list. Yeah, and this is what he brought yep. against the Lizardmen, correct? Indeed. We have, once again, have four Rat Ogres. We have the uh, single Skaven weapons team. Daddy Boo Boo Sharpshooters. The ROR Gisales. And then for the leadership, once again, just two Skaven Assassins. Full kit. They both have Rival High Talisman and Trophy Heads. And I'll go over Rival High Talisman in one second here. No, and it's Grace here. Standard kit, summons, and everything. Now, one reason you can bring assassins in almost every setup is they have a massive uh, line debuff. The Rival High Talisman, it's a uh, minus 44 to melee attack in a 40 meter radius for 30 seconds. So, yeah. you can use that as a big line debuff in any matchup, really. It's a one time use, but you can gain huge value from it. So, yeah, that's the Skaven army. What has the this goat army to, brought to just smash through this rat army? Or will they be uh, held up by the rat army? I what guess problem, son? only one way to find out, and you know, starting with the front line, we got Gore Herd up front vanguarded. We got some Ungor Herd here with two Ungor Raiders backing them up. Three Ungor Herd, which are Ungor Spearmen Herd. Gonna have two of the Razor Gore Chariot, I mean Razor Gore Herd, which I absolutely love. These guys are the best. Um, well, they should see a dermatologist. He's gonna have two more Ungor Spearmen over here, along with the Korox Man Rippers. Korox Man Rippers will have Morgor the Shadow Gabe in there with Call to Violence as well as both of his summons. He's going to have the Butchers of Kalkengard as well as a Bray Shaman of Death. Bray Shaman of Death will have uh, what appears to be Spirit Leech and is that Doom and Darkness or Aspect of the Drag Knight? I can never remember. I think it's Doom and Darkness. That is indeed Doom and Darkness. Doom and Darkness with the Jagged Dagger. He also has some Vanguarded Centigors um, in the back line, which he has just dived in on top of some Skaven Slaves and is now pulling out as the Rat Ogres come to counter. That's yeah, a nice pick there, just gained some uh, quick value. Yeah, some absolutely agree. That could not really uh, hit back with the Senegors, but oh, one of the Senegors looks like it may have been. Yeah, it's been caught by a few Rat Ogres, and it's, uh, it's taking some punishment for its early engagement. Absolutely, and the Natty Boo Boo Sharpshooters doing some nice targeting on top of the Bray Shaman of Death there. He's taking about a quarter health and maybe closer to a third after this next volley. But yeah, Butch is a Kalkengard diving in here with the Ungor herd. Yeah, this is a nice engagement, just hitting a flank of the Skaven, crumbling a few uh, key units. And... He's been just kind of get the work done here with only the Natty Boo Boo sharpshooters shooting away. If he could only just hide this uh, caster and find some safe ground. I think yeah. he needs to get it back to the forest there. If he can yeah, he, up onto that hill. he needs to get out of there so fast. It's just taking way too much damage. And it's so important for him to keep that unit healthy. Especially with yep. the Doom and Darkness going to be key to his gameplay plan, I believe. Here so we go. Uh, a big Doom and Darkness going down. So we did get some uh, value out of the way. But yeah, if you could just get that unit back and keep it alive. Escape and have used so much ammo and so much time just trying to kill it. Just it, it almost alive. looks like he's yeah. trying to position the Bray Shaman behind the Grace here. <laughs> And, yeah, you see that? Oh, yeah. The Natty Boo Boos just shot the bell. They're shooting their own bell. That is, if that's on purpose, that is genius. I love it. But yeah, yeah, look at this. The Beastmen are getting huge routes over here. And a lot of the Skaven are just running off in swaths. Um, as the Beastmen continue to push really hard from the northern side of the battlefield. <laughs> a northern threat, so to speak. Um, Indeed. <laughs> Indeed, my son. Look at that. Very nice play here with the Senegor trying to escort some of these key units off the field, but mm -hmm. oh no, it looks like the Rat Ogres may uh, catch up, and if they can save this assassin, that'd be big. But, oh yeah, yeah. Minotaurs and everything crashing into the Skaven line, it's looking bad for the Skaven at this point. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, the Natty Boo Boo Sharpshooters are still online. If one thing is definitely still going in favor of the Skaven, it's going to be that, as the Bray Shaman of Death is nearly on his last leg, and there's some Rat Ogres making him waver already. 
but it looks like the Natty Booba Sharpshooters have shifted their targeting to the Butchers of Kalkengard, and they're doing a ton of damage right now. Yeah, those Butchers need to get out there, find some safe ground, and start healing back up, and maybe try and kill these rat Yeah, it yeah, seems the Beastman Assault has finally been stalled, and uh, this mass of rats is holding strong. Yeah. And look at that, the Assassin came back from routing my son, and he's coming back with vengeance on these enemies. Yeah, one big Doom and Darkness cast down before the caster started routing, and it looks like he's going to be killed now. Um, but I just don't know if there's going to be enough leadership penalties to get any routes to capitalize on that Doom and Darkness, and it looks like the Skaven are starting to bring this back into their favor. Indeed, and a blessing with filth has helped most of the lines of the Skaven. Putting down a little bit of poison to help uh, win combat. And yeah, the Skaven are... Going back with the counterattack here. Ray Shaman is, yeah, almost dead. 12 HP. Yeah, Bray Shaman is and dead now. Is it Dornell? And uh, the Skaven still outnumber him about 2 to 1 right now. The Natty Boo Boo Sharpshooters have really been MVP right now in terms of dealing with the Butchers and dealing with the Bray Shaman. Uh, without the Natty Boo Boos right now, I don't really know where the Skaven would be, to be honest. I think those units have been absolutely vital to making these Beastman army work. And looking in the center now, looks like we're seeing a lot of routes again. Rat Ogres are routing, Clan Rats, Skaven Slaves are routing. However, there is an Assassin on top of Morgor, but... Yeah, this is a very back and forth battle. I can't get a good read on it. <laughs> yeah, the Core Rocks are the last bastion really for the Beastmen here. As the some of this, you know, uh, this is success is uh, just a flash in the pan with the uh, Chaos Spawn here. Once yep. they they drop the uh, the Rats may return twofold here on the the Beastmen. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's just. Beastmen are losing a lot of the key threats of sending ogres, the chariots gone, the butchers. Yeah. Now what can they do against this mass of rats? And there's still a rat ogre. Yeah, that, yeah, it's completely online. Yeah, and now both assassins are on top of Morgor, and he can't fight two assassins at once. And He's now we tough, hear the bell but... chime, and the beastmen are just uh, getting bogged down by all these bodies. I do love that, uh, the sound of the bell, they've really enhanced it, and I'm just hearing across the battlefield just echo, it's a yeah. true terror. It is a wonderful addition indeed, and yeah, the sound is just so lovely. It was some beautiful early play by the Beastmen. Just... Yeah. It just seems that their blade was dulled, um, yeah. and uh, yeah, now it's going to go in the Skaven's favor, the Assassins just turning out to be the perfect answer to Morgor, and honestly, I really would have liked to have seen the Centigors go more aggressively for the Natty Boobers, Boo Boo Sharpshooters, because in my mind, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Romulan, in the chat, it just seems that the one thing that was able to take care of the key units that were just melting the Skaven army was the Natty Boo Boo Sharpshooters. Yeah, I would absolutely agree. Moving that caster was certainly paramount to their uh, success. That caster could have just ran across that Skaven front. He could have killed countless rats. And, yeah, you know, maybe, uh... I like the early engagement with the Centigors, but maybe you don't bring both of them. Maybe you just use one of them. Maybe you keep yeah. one in reserve. You know, you don't show your hand quite so early. And yeah. Just see if but no, the opportunity opens up, you could have a great chance to just get in there. And I think he had a few chances in the late game. Or at least uh, once the engagement started to get back in, uh one of the flanks, take out the Nanny Boo Boos, or just keep that caster alive. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, my game crashed. Your game crashed? Yeah, huh. might as well. Yeah, so, uh, very interesting Skaven armies from uh, Chief, and he's used them very well. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, well played. well played. Hey guys, guess what? Third match match, uh, third place match is happening. So let's go get into it. Archon Sounds just good. said he'll play. Sylvanius, thank you so much for the follow, friend. Hope you're enjoying yourself.
<laughs> for whom the bell tolls. <laughs> Optimus Prime. Yeah, that's <laughs> just cue up some Metallica every time the Skaven win with the Unholy Clamor Bell. So, Aerocrastic Skaven taking on Archon's Empire. Round one of the third place match for today's top eight playoffs. Let's go ahead and throw the intro card up on the screen after I move the army blocker and my camera. Tower of Hoeth, first time we've seen it today, and uh, let's see who takes third place and gets a $25 Steam gift card. Second place gets $75, and first place gets a $200 payment via PayPal or Steam if they want it there. Bump up, 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 here we go. It cracks me up how when you zoom in before they load in, you can still hear their army. Like, I just hear a bunch of sneaky, invisible Skaven laughing and grunting around me. Skaven, we're everywhere. Uh, the rats. Uh, yes, yes. They formed another city. They're coming to the surface. We must rally the men. Rally the elect accounts. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what they bring. Okay, man, here is the players loaded in. And did you want to take the Empire since you've done Skaven lately? Yeah, I'd be happy to take the Empire and. Well, well uh, lay it out for us. Very interesting Empire it is. Very interesting army. Now we'll start with the infantry. Now, we have a very strong, unbreakable line for Flagellants. And. Sigmar's sons, the ROR. Sword unit, we have two spearmen with shields. As well, we have four crossbows, backing them up. Now for the cavalry, we have once again, looks like, four pistoliers. Seems to very much favor that unit. And now uh, we do have two, yeah, this looks like two standard Empire Knights. Now for the leadership, we have a Right wizard on a horse, flaming skull, fireball, blast. Now for the leader, we have Horse Toddbringer, and he is the uh, you know, Crush the Weak, Regen, and Foe Seeker. Now, what have the, the rats brought for us, my son? It looks like there's a lot of it. Yeah, quite a lot of rats. Once again, going to be a huge army. Uh, we're going to have clan rats. Um, couple's clan rat. Yeah, just a lot of rats. <laughs> we'll just say a lot of clan rats, Skaven slaves, and Skaven slave spears. Let's He's see. then going to have the four rat ogres. He's going to have a doom wheel. He's going to have some Skaven slave slingers, which I like to see. A very cost efficient unit that should be able to do quite a lot of damage against flagellants with their low armor. He's going to have a second doom wheel, which I didn't notice at first. And they're going to go right through those flagellants. Um, aside from that, for the leadership, we do have an assassin. Um, I think just one of assassin by the looks of it. He is going to have with him the slippery, and I believe that's it. Yeah, slippery and assassin's trophy. And then we got the grace here of plague, uh, bringing the summons, the unholy clamor, bound scorch, and arcane conduit. So no surprises there. My goodness, just look at this massive rats. And it really won't matter much with these unbreakable units. Uh, sure, they're unbreakable, but they'll just get dragged down by those rats yeah. with their low uh, melee defense. Even the Skaven Slave will be done. Yeah, a nice burning head through a couple yeah, um, nice. from Skaven Slaves, which made them route rather easily. But when I look in the center here, it seems like the Skaven Slaves and everybody have just put down a number on top of these poor flagellants. They may be unbreakable, but they are taking a ton of damage. Indeed, uh, just uh, such a mess of rats. Just look at this. Uh, four rats now uh, in the back lines chasing these crossbows. Empire Knights starting to get worn down by the uh, rat ogres, and it just seems like too many targets for these pistoliers and the uh, crossbows to take, as well with only a single Empire Knight. Looks like the Skaven onslaught is just moments away from compromising all these units. Yeah. 
No, I couldn't agree more, and you know, I will have to yeah, rethink this, this rule and stuff, but I definitely don't think it's unwinnable, <laughs> but it's a ton of Skaven forces oh, out man. here. We need some uh, more rat ogres. Oh, man. Just, uh, just smashing through these Empire Knights. Yeah. Very nice game to both players right now. We see the Pistoliers coming around from Ark on the Black, trying to desperately get something working here in his favor, but yeah, it's it's looking a bit rough, you know, there's uh, just the Skaven Slaves putting out this damage on top of the Flagellants must be incredibly frustrating, and what a nice pick here from Aerocrastic. But yeah, these sl uh, Slayers are really just putting in work. Uh, yeah, this is a nice move by Arkin here. Getting his uh, Pistolers into the back lines. If he can keep pushing, uh, yeah, he could really just mop up this back line here. Oh yeah, Should because... Be, uh, good recovery since his back line is starting to get compromised. Yeah, well, and the thing is, is like the it's a ton of units, but all of these slave units, these slingers, the spears, and the regular Skaven slaves, can lose in combat to pistoliers, which I think really speaks to their quality. Ooh. Yep. And here in the central yep, engagement, though, what's good. happening? Boris is in combat with the assassins and some rat ogres. Looks like he's about to rout, though. Yeah, does uh, rat ogre support? Uh, they're really just putting a beating on Boris. Yeah. As well, it looks like, yeah, he's, uh, yeah, keep up by that assassin's trophy. Like you mentioned, oh, yeah, just so much pressure by this, uh, escape normally. Just so many rats. Yeah. It is the true vermin tide we are witnessing right now in front of the Tower of Hoeth. And, uh, yeah, the rat ogres just aren't gonna let poor Boris take off from the ground again, and, uh, I hear a burning head, though. Yeah, it's roasting some rats. But, uh, again, it's just slaves, you know. Yeah. Just not getting enough damage done onto any blobbed-up infantry for it to really matter, and, uh, yeah. Where did, uh, Boris go? Did he get up in the air, or did he die? Oh. Yeah, no, Boris was, uh, you know, brought down by the assassin and the ogres. Yeah. As the, uh, the remnants of the Empire Knights were torn up by the Doom Wheels. Yeah. I mean, some good kills on the pistol there's all around, but honestly, what I think that army needed was some uh, grenade launchers myself. That's a real easy way to help clean up some of those chaff units. Yeah. Yeah, but, it's, uh, pistolers are a good unit, but it just seems like an odd pick in a couple of these matchups here. Like you're saying, the grenade launchers just, uh, imagine the kills, though. Yeah. They still got pretty good kills, uh, we say that, but then again, 2,600 rats. So. Even 130 kills doesn't seem like a lot. Yeah. No, this is... Those uh, are numbers on the field. And this is also one of those matchups where, you know, hindsight's 20-20, but what would have worked better against these is probably just spearmen and swordsmen going cheaper rather than flagellants. Um, the Empire could also bring yeah. an over-20 army here. And, you know, hindsight's 20-20. Flagellants would do better against elite, more high-level Skaven infantry, but... When it comes yep. to Skaven Slaves, Swordsmen will kill them just as easily as Flagellants, and you're going to save yourself 200 a pop and 300 yep. if you go down to Spearmen. So I think here yeah, the like Unbreakable that. line kind of bit him in the ass a bit, and just going cheaper and wider would have helped. Yeah, they were Unbreakable, but then again, they were just easily occupied by the Skaven Slaves as the Rat Ogres continued to push with the Doom Wheels and the Assassin. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I would have liked to see that from the Empire, you know? Kind of a similar army, but a bit more quality with all the Spears, Swordsmen. And then, you know, maybe double griffins for the uh, the Doom Wheels, a bunch mm -hmm. of a, uh, you know, Empire Knights, but, you know, hindsight, obviously, to know that rush is coming for you uh, makes it a bit easier. Yeah. Maybe he was trying to, you know, get the Pistoliers in the back lines just to kill the Gisales, you know. Maybe that yeah. was just his intention. A few cheap cab units he could sack if he needed to get in the back lines. That's actually Kinda a good like point, hounds, I mean. You know, just yeah. like hounds. They're 500. It's pretty much uh, a yeah. hound at that point, a hound that has... Of handgun, yeah. so yeah. I mean, it I is don't. It's really light cab option, you know. It is for the Empire, Empire, definitely. Yeah, and I, I think overall, I didn't mind this army. I just, yeah, I think maybe dropping two or three flagellants because you still want some unbreakable units. I, I always recommend bringing unbreakable units, but like, yeah, I think yeah, he yeah, could have just bought a bit a... more mass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the thing. The it helps in a lot of matchups, but uh, especially a matchup like that for a number of reasons. Yeah. Now, it is Arrow's pick, though. Looks like... Uh, 
Uh, yeah, see what they pick. Who will come out on top? And is Arrow choosing high also, it looks like? Uh, what's... So High Elf spanning Dark Elves and Norska. Since it is my son tournament, he can make whatever retarded rules he likes. Can't remember them and change things during the game itself. It's not last his own tournament. Sure. Okay, and here we go. Zombies, Skaven Slaves, or Peasants? Oh man, that is a duel for the ages, and I think I'd have to put my money on the zombies, because they cause fear and they won't break. Yeah, for sure, man. The zombos all day. Zombies. It could be a matter of this, you know, something up for discussion. Best infantry in the game? Zombies? Maybe. Yeah, definitely zombies. I mean, it's also up for debate. What do you mean by best infantry? You know, like most valuable, cost efficient. You know, you know the one that hits the hardest, wins in all engagements. Uh, yeah. So, but yeah, zombos, man. It's always the zombos. But this matchup, high elves versus empire, it can just be a beautiful matchup. There's uh, mm -hmm. a few games I think we've seen in this matchup which have really just been outstanding. So. Yeah. And, uh, we'll you know, we haven't seen High Elves yet today, so I'm looking forward to seeing it. And, you know, interesting to see Archon picking the Empire again. Um, I wasn't expecting that. I figured he'd go for an undead faction at this point. Yeah, you would think so. Thinking maybe he's just trying to save those top three factions for the last three games. As a, yeah. you know. Well, and honestly, all things considered, I think the Empire has a very strong matchup against the High Elves, more so than some of the undead <laughs> factions. I guess they shouldn't say yeah. very strong matchup. It has a better matchup. Yeah, I know High Elf players have a few uh, tricks in this matchup. And uh, with the High Elves and all their tools, they have a lot of answers for whatever you try to bring. But then again, what are you going to do when a Stank comes after you? Well, probably kill with the Dragon. But anyway, uh, I do hope we see a Stank in this matchup. This is one of the matchups I think it can be very valuable. Mm -hmm. If not, it can be a lot of fun. Agreed, and I mean, ugh, the anticipation is killing me. I'm wondering if Archon is going to be tilted for every battle this time because of the last match. I hope he can clear his headspace, play some clean games, because I want to see this series, you know, um, have some good battles and not end in any drama. But you want the Hiles for the Empire, my friend. I can go over the uh, the Empire once again. I like to see the, uh, the changes they've made. All right. And, uh, I will start with the infantry here. Now we have five spearmen with shields. Now we have a strong center with two great swords. Quite a bit of cavalry. Looks like. Yep, two Reichsguard, accompanied by a demigriff with halberd on either flank, one of them being the Arawar. Altar of Griffites. Now for the leadership we have a Jade Wizard in the air. Looks like she just has a. Uh, Dweller is and Earthblood, and we have Carl Franz on a peg with Galmaraz and Stand Your Ground. Interesting choice. What has the High Elf brought to deal with this, my son? Well, the High Elves um, have a pretty interesting army, too. They're going to have two Shadow Warriors up front for the Skirmishing Contingent. Uh, for his mobility, he's going to have Silver Helms with shields, three of them to be precise. Going to see two White Lines of Trace. Are, sorry, three white lines of trace and three spearmen. Um, he's also going to have fourth leadership down on the ground here. A mage of high magic going to be bringing the Book of Hoeth as well as the Tempest, Apotheosis, and the Shield of Safari. And then we're going to have a princess up in the air on a star dragon. That princess will be bringing Foe Seeker as well as the arrow or loose. Oh, big charge going down. Look at that. Oh, oh the great yeah. Swords. Smashed the lines, and he painted another charge to bait out the, uh, the 
cavalry. Sorry, just had to. Oh no, no. Like that beautiful play. Oh, Tempest going down on, on the Jade. Yeah, it looks like the Tempest. Oh yeah, it still hit Carl too, but uh, Carl's just uh, gotten further out of it. It seems it's, it doesn't seem to be affecting Carl. I'm surprised. It looks like it glitched out. It says it's affecting him, but he was not slowed down. <laughs> Ooh, the dwellers though. Oh, a lovely dwellers coming in here from the Empire on top of those silver helms now. That's just massive play, but oh, it looks like the Demis might have ran in. So uh, I don't think they'll take too much damage from that. No. But, yeah, it was very nice dwellers took it. Put a lot of damage on that, that cap. Look at that, they're both under half health. Now. Yeah, and over here though, the princess, look at her taking a pounding from Carl Franz on his Pegasus. Carl Franz is no joke. Yeah, he's just the man on a mission on that Pegasus. Oh, but. Breath. This breath. Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness. Carl, are you okay? <laughs> you just that got... dragon just came back with the vengeance breath saying Carl I'm here but uh, let's see they're in the air now so they might have the advantage but oh no oh, Tempest, Tempest. But Carl just escapes yeah he keeps on go. escaping it keeps on saying he has low speed but <laughs> oh yeah, man like Carl taking some huge hits though from the star dragon I don't know if he's gonna be able to make it yeah wow look at that got chunked, which is a uh, surprise. And, oh no, this could really uh, domino yeah. effect here. The Jade Wizard was in combat, now she's terror routed. Their chase off the field, it could be it, but the Empire Cab is running roughshod. Yeah. Just running all over this uh, pile of force. It's really beautiful. Just shattered all the infantry. The uh, Silver Helms are gone after that Dwellers, and there are still Demigriffs on the field, so yeah. oh, if this Jade Wizard can just stay alive, the Empire has a great chance here. They have the balance of power, but if not, that dragon could just get a few press and they might be able to tear it out. Yeah. Oh, Carl Fran's going to just survive to fight another day. We'll see if he continues to survive. He's at 489, and he won't be able to be healed as we see the princess very much not going to let that caster come back. From that could be huge, though, with uh, Carl Fran staying alive. Yeah. Terror won't be quite as strong at the end game at all. High Elf Caster is getting crushed Stop. by these uh, Rice Guard and like that. Yeah. Oh, but the Tempest, right before it goes, it gets a final Tempest. And that looks like it could be just enough to kill off Carl. Is it going to? No. 19! 19, 19, <laughs> 19 HP, Carl, you son of a bitch. Look at you go, you beautiful bastard. But yeah, the yeah. High Elf's taking a huge loss over here now, and it looks like they may be running out of all of their ground units, which would force the Princess to land. So Archon playing this very, very close. And uh, Absolutely, it's been a beautiful play. He's just come, he's basically winning across the field, just mopped up every single High Elf, high elf unit. Yeah. He's taken out the entire High Elf army, and now it's just a... Uh, a matter of if the High Elf leader has what it takes to bring it back into their favor, but with the Royal Outdoor Griffite still on the field, I, I do have my doubts, but one thing that may be the saving grace for the High Elves is the Royal Outdoor Griffites are way out of position, and uh, all the Empire Knights and Reichsguard aren't going to really have anything to oh, touch there's the breath. Princess. <gasps> oh my god! Did that do damage? Uh, it wasn't quite, uh... It was actually on the wrong side of the blob. It needed to be on the other side of the, uh, the Spearman. It yeah. killed some Reichsgar, but it wasn't quite what I thought it may have. But still, it's uh, it's getting these units below half health and giving them a good chance for the Terra route to take effect. And here yeah. we go. Arrow's going right after it. And this dragon could just... Yeah, the high health, like you're saying, is all over the field. The Demis need to be here to provide support. Or, you know, I'd probably just run my Reichsgar away. You know, I'm not even yeah. sure I'd send them after the dragon. Uh, oh, but here we go. If he goes after the Shadow Warriors, that's a good move. Yeah, and it looks like the Demogriff Knights are coming over to play now. And, you know, unless they get a big breath on them or something, the Demogriff Knights are going to be just fine in combat for a while. But here comes a big charge. Oh, that was a big hit on top of the Royal Author of Griffites. Oh, wow, that was huge. It's just, it's killing a couple models every swing, these... Oh, but now is it going to get surrounded, or is the terror going to kick on the Royal Altar of Griffites first? They cause terror, so yeah, I guess they can't go. be terrified. Yeah, no. 
Balance oh. of power is too heavily in the Empire's favor. Yeah. It's a chain route. GG. Very yeah. Well played. Very, very well played to both players there. Archon doing great work of pretty much winning across the field minus the leadership engagement. So, yeah. Very well played. Great cavalry play in particular. Yeah, and that early damage she got down on the dragon proved to be the key with uh, the removal of the High Elf caster. Uh, that dragon just was too worn down. Otherwise, uh, it almost looked like Arrow might have been able to bring that back. But, yeah. Yeah. And the I... Reichsguard proving uh, to be the true bodyguards for Carl, though. Carl with only 19 HP, and the Reichsguard saves him. That was uh, quite intense. You know, one more bow shot from the princess would have killed him. So, yeah, hanging by a thread there in an impressive matter. So, going to be tied at 1-1. I think this is the first time players have been tied this entire tournament. Actually, no, I lied. Vicious Satsuma was tied 1-1 one, one, one point. I'm here, by the way. All right, great, Romulan. Just in time to go over this Vampire Coast army that has your favorite unit in the game. Ah, oh, perfect. Um, well, look at that. Look at that. It is a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. Oh, Queen Bessie. Oh, Queen Bessie. Now we'll Bessie. start with the... Yes, and uh, there was one more unit I would have liked to see with it, but... Regardless, Queen Bessie, a beautiful thing. She's being deployed in this uh, very nice V. It's like a flying duck formation. <laughs> ducks, flying ducks, bee. ducks, ducks. Now we have, yes, yes. And it's anchored by five deckhand mobs. Well, supported by five deckhand mobs and anchored, I should say, by two death guard. Now it is supported by looks of just two scurvy dogs. Now we also have two fell bats. Once again, for the skirmish contingent, we have four deck droppers, the standard non-AP variant. For the leadership, we have uh, it's like uh, the standard choice, fleet captain, floor vampires. This time has the summons, though, with the heck. And we have Luther Harkin in the air. We just horn swaggle once again, and here we go. The battle has begun. It looks like uh, the skirmish may soon be underway. Looks like it, and uh, for the Dark Elves, we got two Dark Riders with shields here. We got a couple of Shades with their stock. Um, we're going to have five units of Bleak Swords, as well as one uh, Black or Corsair with Hambos. And then another strong Air Force here, actually. We're going to see the Black Dragon. So two Black Dragons with Marathi in the air. Marathi on top of her Pegasus is going to have Soul Stealer. Power of Darkness, as well as Melkos Mystify Miasma, Heart Render of the Dark Sword, and Enchanting Beauty with Greater Arcane Conduit and Spiteful Conjuration. So what are your thoughts here, Romulan? I mean, the Air Force is going to be pretty strong for the Dark Elves here, and uh, do you think Luther Harkin will be able to tango with this much power up in the air? Well, I would say, uh, yeah, there's no way here. And now this could be the bait. Put Marathi out here, drop a Soul Stealer. As well, Marathi's faster than Luther. He shouldn't really be easily able to get away, though. Uh, oh, look at that. The Soul Stealer is going down on the deck droppers. That might be a misclick. Yeah. That might have been a misclick. And now, oh, beautiful play here. Look at the bats going down the shades, trying to occupy them. But mm -hmm. yeah, the Dark Riders here are here to support those. So it should be quickly cleaned Ooh, up. But Queen Bess, though. <laughs> yes. I was going to say, they are allowing Queen Bessie to get those shots on the shades. And the old Queen Bessie, look at her do her work. Uh-oh, Shades, what you gonna do? You gotta move! You gotta move, Shades! Oh! oh, <laughs> oh massive hit. That Just did beautiful. quite a lot of damage, yeah. Beautifully done. We'd really like to see a gunnery white with old Queen Bessie, you know? She only has 16 shots. Um, sometimes she gets sniped well before that, but you can keep her online. A gunnery white, I mean, it's almost double the value on the cannon. So. Yeah. And it's really hard to calculate just what you can get out of that value there. But it looks like the chase is on. Marathi being chased by uh, deck droppers. Deck droppers being chased by a black dragon. Black dragon being chased by Luther. And Luther's being chased by another black dragon. It's the Congo line you never want to see, chat. <laughs> the craziest Congo line of all time. But yeah, Luther Harkin, yep. you know, doing a lot of That's damage right. to Marathi right now. Desperately trying to get on top of her. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know. This Air Force engagement is interesting to me. I still don't know who's going to come out on top because I feel like the deck droppers and fell bats are, you know, something that can't be discounted yet. Ooh. Yeah, and you know, another Soul Stealer going down on those said deck droppers. And yeah, it's, I don't know, it's an interesting choice. 
I'm almost wondering if he's doing it more so for the heals than the damage, but yeah, it seems very premature to be throwing down Soul Stealers this early in the game. They're an expensive spell, and Marathi gets much more health back if she does it on top of Blobs, so... Yeah. It's, it's gonna be interesting. This map is... I mean, this match is, uh... Two unique armies doing things. Oh! Queen Bess getting another huge hit on the Shades. They need to spread out. Yeah, old Queen Bess, though, only four shots remain, but... Look at those shots. They are glorious. Simply glorious. Mm-hmm. Marathi but. coming into combat with Luther Harkin, and uh, Luther probably doesn't want to be here. No, and uh, I think this is the the key to the Dark Elf plan here. You know, if they can just get on Luther. Marathi's faster than Luther. She has Melkos. Even if uh, Luther team ups her, this hit squad should be able to keep up with yep. them. And uh, Luther's gone. I mean, it, it's absolutely game. Look at that. He's uh, yeah. just about to crumble. My goodness. But, oh, he's getting away yet again. <laughs> but still, that, that happened really fast, you know. Yeah. Uh, he went from 100 to 0 in just seconds. Yeah, and his healing cap is now visible, so. Uh, and also, the Queen Bess is going to be out of ammunition. One more shot? Yeah, one yeah. more shot. So, after that, then Archon has to attack with his deck droppers, and uh, I don't think they're going to win the combat against the Black or Corsairs. Um, and the Shades still have decent model counts, 46 and 49, so, you know, they're not hopeless by any stretch of the imagination. And a good breath or two, and those Depth Guard are completely deleted. Yeah. The Balance of Power are going to swing towards the Dark Elves as the ammunition for the Queen Bess runs out, and, you know, I couldn't agree more that Gunnery White really would have been nice right now. The other thing that's beautiful with Gunnery White is you can actually push him ahead with your front line since you have all these bats, you have mm -hmm. Luther. You have these supporting elements. You have the dogs to pin things on the ground. You can use him to put a little more, you know, uh, punishing fire down on Marathi. A little cover fire for Luther. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, just double the rounds of the Queen Bess. Feels bad, man. Feels bad. Yeah. But, uh, regardless, Queen Bessie, uh, oh, I was going to say she got pretty good work done, but she only got 25 kills. So, they're beautiful shots nonetheless. But, yeah, 25 kills is a bit surprising. Oh, yeah, here we go, a breath going right down on the uh, all these bats, and oh, that's a beautiful shot right down Oh, the, wow, right yeah. There. That did quite a lot of damage, actually, killing off a few of those bats. Yeah, just falling from the sky. The first one was really good. The second one uh, oh, missed a bit, but... But the shades are way yeah. out of position. What is happening with those shades? Yeah, Arkin's done a really good job here getting his bats in and uh, harassing these shades. And the scurvy dogs, too. I mean, it's just like... It seems like a big like collapse in judgment there's forgetfulness there you know like very important units your shades especially for the depth guard on the field so yeah that was a, a bit of a loss to lose the better part of that shade but then again black dragons will be able to take care of depth guard no problem and i don't see anything on the field that's going to deal with these black dragons now yeah absolutely agree luther is just running for his life here yeah. I mean, at this point, I'm not going to say anything. Whatever. We'll give them some time. They'll figure it out. They'll start attacking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a interesting situation for either player. So Arrow, uh, his dragons can take care of all this infantry, but the you know, Black Heart Corsairs will do well, but the Bleak Swords, I mean, they will get chopped up by the Depth Guard. Yes. But I'm, yeah, I'm a little good. surprised that the uh, Dark Elf doesn't just go into combat and try and, you know, bait a few blobs out of this infantry. And or maybe he's waiting for his breath to recharge, you know? I think he... Uh, oh, here oh, it that comes. seems a bit early. It yeah, does seem a bit early. early. Yeah, because it's going to miss. It's going to whip. Uh, yeah. It did, it did okay damage, but then again, if he just waited for the engagement, he might have been able to get a two for one and delete the Depth yeah. Guard completely. Here comes a Soul Stealer on top of Luther Harkin, and now uh, Marathi's chasing him. Yeah, look at that. Marathi and Luther Harkin approaching their healing caps. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it looks like the uh, Dark Elves are going to start committing to combat against all these boys. They've done some good damage on top of the Depth Guard um, on the approach. And uh, yeah, Balance of Power is still relatively even though, so 
Not sure no, he's going to come go. out on top. Oh, a Dragon big breath coming in from Luther Harkon on top of Marathi. But the Black Dragon is coming out, and now the chase is back on again. But Archon's doing a great job of keeping his fell bats in reserve to, you know, screen retreats and uh, get yeah. away. A very nice move, and though as he goes after Marathi, the Black Dragon, well, the Black Dragon was going after his caster, but... Wait, is this going to be a breath uh, here? I think so. This could be massive. Uh, or maybe not. Maybe he's just going back in for that charge. There's oh. a breath, though. Oh, there's a breath. Oh, that's a breath. That did some yeah, good damage. Yeah. Now the caster is getting uh, sniped by the dragon, and it's the below half health now. And I don't know why the dragon keeps pulling out, to be honest. I think he just, just go after the caster and just kill it. Yeah. Although, maybe he's trying to get after Luther. Still, oh, yeah, Marathi! Oh, yeah. Taking a huge, huge hit, but a Soul Stealer going down once again on Luther Harkin, and uh, that should heal her up just enough to save the day. And now both Black Dragons join after Luther Harkin in the air. Yeah, wow, look at that. Marathi down to just about 400 health, but actually, yeah, very close to rehealing cap. Oh, oh very nice. Yeah, summon of gunnery mob. Is really oh there goes Marathi. Marathi's dead. Very nice play. Very, Very nice well play played. indeed. And this black dragon's taking a lot of damage too. Yeah. He needs to kill the vampire lord, the fleet captain. Yeah, I was thinking just stay in combat, but this uh this summon here, as opposed to summoning a uh, standard that can mob, he's gone with the uh, the missile variant. It's really just. Just uh, almost been his uh, most valuable unit here. Just clean up Arathi and everything, supporting the back line, now forcing the dragon off. Yeah. It's a very nice summon, very nice play here. Yeah, and look at this. The balance of power is shifting back to the Vampire Coast right now, and uh, it looks like Archon could be bringing this back into his corner. Yeah, got Luther Harkin over there chasing down. We have a Black Dragon over here that's doing okay for itself, but... That summon is going to run out in the near future, I imagine, but right now, that Black Dragon is just having a terrible time in combat on the ground. Yeah, it's just doing so much damage with those guns. At close range, just look at that. Almost all... Now, now there we go. Now there. it's coming down. But every bottle was hitting on that range. Yeah. Now it looks like the Black Dragon is slightly stabilizing, but... Yeah, I don't know. I don't think they can do this now without uh, any leadership on the field. Yeah, wow. I must say, again, just what a nice play summoning that unit at the back lines instead of just trying to win the uh, the front line fight, which really was just... Uh, I mean, they really were losing uh, just across the board, nearly. Yeah. Uh, with the dragons, the breaths. But no, he summoned in the back line just to help Luther Harkin in the air, help keep those, uh, you know, gun bats supported. Mm -hmm. And yeah, very nice play. Very good... Uh, yeah. Priority. Target priority there as well. And yeah. Yeah, and no, Queen that Bessie, was... you know? The real MVP, I should say. I mean, obviously, Queen Bessie's the real MVP. Obviously. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that was uh, Eric Krasik's battle to lose there. Um, not to take away from Archon's play. I think he did some really good moves there, especially that summon, as you're pointing out. But I do think his prioritization of targets wasn't completely where it needed to be, at least on Eric Krasik's part. I... I really would have liked to have seen an earlier investment in killing the Vampire Lord on the ground um, rather than chasing Harkin so much because, honestly, once Queen Bess was dead, if the Black Dragons would have just flown in there, killed the Vampire Fleet Captain, Luther Harkin's only option would be to fly in after him or just let them eat him up. And then after the Vampire Fleet Captain's dead, you know, take care of everything else at your leisure. But letting that captain stay alive, that's what led to the late game summon, that's what led to the late game heals. And to yep, me, man. that's the only reason he lost. Yeah, they're just, like you said, there wasn't much to punish that action, and uh, I think, yeah, that was absolutely the play that needed to be made. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, as well, I just imagine a couple harpies, too, would really help that uh, that battle. I like the dragons and everything in the Air Force, but it seems like if you're going that route with Dark Elves in that matchup, you need a couple harpies to push off those bats, you know? Yeah. Or just at least, you know, take some of the damage for the dragons and whatnot. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, though, so, interesting. It was, uh, it was a well-played game, I'd say. Also, yeah. I have to mention the the scurvy dogs when unit got 136 kills. Oh wow! So yeah, that's, that's... a good dog play. Good dog.
<laughs> uh, I think here it's going to be really big. Because, you know, if you get a good engagement for either side, it usually just kind of, you know, steamrolls the victory from there. Just snowballs, yeah. you could say. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, the night terrors are still there, but uh, much needed nerf on the other Morgul's. So Skaven have a much better option here, not only from that yeah. debuff, but because of all their DLC units, which is old news now, but you want the Vampire Coast or the Skaven, bud? Uh, I'll go for the Vampire Coast since I had been uh, discussing them earlier anyway, and it uh, be an interesting army to go over. Sounds good. Uh, go ahead and take it away, and also thank you to Plu of Tart for the follow. Now starting with the infantry, uh, the core, we have five of the deckhand mobs. As well, we have two deckham mobs with pole arms, one on either flank. Now, backing them up, we do have four of the said Morinkles. And you know, uh, I'll go into a little bit about this pick after. But anyway, the other mobility, we have two scurvy dogs. As well, we have four fell bats. And, yep, now for the leadership, we have, once again, it's a similar combo. Mm-hmm. Is a vampire fleet captain or vampires? The one addition is the speed of Lycos. Grants 24% speed and stock unspottable to a, a bound unit. As well, we have Luther Harkin in the air. He has the same kit, horn swaggle, and nothing else. And what has the Skaven brought to deal with this, this well, pirate threat? Well, the Skaven have brought. Sorry, my daughter's walking into my room. Uh, it's okay. Brought, she sounds adorable. She is. <laughs> Two gutter runners with poison. We got three plague monks. We got three Skaven slaves. Uh, got clan rats in the back line. Two of them with three clan, um, Skaven slave spears. Two rattling gun weapons teams. We got some rat ogres. We have an assassin here with uh, nothing on him besides um, the trophy hunter. We're going to see Ikit Claw as well as the Dwarf Thing Menace Doom Flayers. So a lot of chariot action over here. And then we saw a warp, uh, a warp Gale go down on top of Luther Harkin right now, pinning him in place. Uh, not too many units in place to punish him, though. It looks like it was more so just to buy themselves some time and get away. Um, yeah, but yeah. Uh, it is overcast, so I'm surprised they're not. They should have time to get some, some fire down, but no, they're going after the... Uh, I don't know, it seems like this might just be fire at will because they're shooting at the... Uh, that yeah. Seems like an odd choice. Yeah, it definitely felt a bit premature on that warp climbing. I mean, Howling Warp Gale. And in goes Luther Harkin after Ikit Claw. Oh, but, but it looks like you might just be baiting him into a good see, spot. This is where I wanted to see that Howling Warp yeah. Gale. Yeah, I would absolutely agree. An Assassin's oh, Trophy is down on top of him. Invocation of Heck going down on top of Luther Harkin immediately. And I love watching the Rattling Gun weapons teams fire. It is so satisfying. Yeah, man. They really have a great animation. And good sound effects, I must say. Yep. Though so perhaps I am. Uh, show a bit of rat favoritism, but... Nonetheless, these bats are just diving in, though, going after these weapons teams. Uh, which may occupy them for a moment, but with this massive rat supporting them, I think they'll be fine. Yeah. Well, and, and there uh, goes... be able to fire all the way. Yeah. Is that another Howling Warp Gale pinning all of the bats in place? Interesting. So, pinning them to the ground, trying to kill them off as quickly as possible. And the Gutter yeah. Runners with poison on the periphery still. This could be starting to get bad for the Skaven, though, with the Night Terrors pouring in here. These yeah. uh, Rat Ogres may be terrified soon as uh, some of the Slings and other Skaven chats are starting to get terrified in a way. And mm -hmm. there are some dogs in the back lines as well. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, uh,. You know, seeing the Skaven, there's some Plague Monks in the front line doing okay. Um, but yeah, a lot of the Skaven infantry is worse for wear, and there's a lot of routing going on right now. Luther Harkin is flying overhead, and it seems like he's not worried about anything at the moment. Yeah, look at Ikka Claw, though. Really, is just the hero going right after the uh, Vampire Fleet Captain. Surrounded by these, uh, these terrors in the night. Yeah. But uh, with these dogs in the back line, it's preventing some of the escape and retreat, and they don't have very good ground to pull back. They're getting uh, routed all across the field, really. And, uh, yeah, it's, it says it's a perfectly even game, but Luther Harkin is just tearing apart rats. The, uh, the rat ogres are just about gone, and two players seem pretty worn down at this point. Yeah. 
It get Claw getting down on top of Luther Harkin, though. Wants a piece of him, apparently. Assassin's Trophy once again on top of Archon, and there's some Rat Ogres nearby, too. Yeah, this could be the opportunity. Uh, it could, could go right after uh, Luther Harkin here with the Rat Ogre support. Or, uh, anyway, just try to take out. Oh, but the Night Terrors are there with the pull arms, actually. Oh, they pull yeah, out. I just saw them. Yeah, he's going to be pulling out. Not a bad decision, and it looks like the Skaven are doing their best to regroup on the peripheries of the battlefield, as the center is definitely gone in favor of the Vampire Coast. Yeah, absolutely. Point. Oh, Howling Warp Gale going down. This could be the chance to escape the need. Because uh, Vampire Pirates are really pulling ahead in the balance of power, but we'll see. Can this Rattling Gun uh, reposition and get some fire down on uh, Luther Harkin? There we go, finally. Oh, that's some good damage now. Luther Harkin taking a world of hurt right now, but Howling Warp Gale is just worn off, and I think he's going to be able to pull out here. Rattling Gun Weapon Team getting compromised by some more ghouls. Yep, there is poison here, though. And uh, all the while, Claw is hitting him. And we know Chariot sometimes can uh, help keep units on the ground, but... Oh! Wow, if it, <laughs> this could be huge. If, if Luther Harkin gets out, I think it's just an easy Vampire Ghost victory, but... If he dies, it's a game. Oh, oh those Doom Flayers just tear around. I thought they might have been able to... Pin Luther oh, in. Oh, no, yeah. I think he's nah. getting away. And there goes our invocation from the heck, and there goes Luther Harkin getting away. And, uh, yeah, I think that's going to be a GG now. Yeah, dude, there we go. It gets routing. Terror route, yeah, just moments away. And, yeah, the GG. Unless oh, Howling Warp Gale comes in here, but even then, I think it's too little too late. Sorry, I'd say uh, Arkin showing that the Mongol rush is still very strong. Yeah. And I was going to say, uh, with the small, well, with the debuffs to Mongols, it makes the Mongol Hunters a bit more viable. Uh, since there's, I mean, they're still a very strong unit before, yeah. but now uh, if you want terror, it's either the Arawars or mm -hmm. you have to get the Hunters. And occupy a hero slot, but yeah, look at the kills on the Mongols. Just yeah. massive. I think uh, 400, uh, yeah, over 400 kills amongst them. And, and once again, 139 kills on a doggo. Very well used. Indeed. Yeah. I mean, looking at the Plague Monks over here, 260, 89, like, there's good kills on the Skaven side, too, and there's a few parts where I think he could have won it, but the first huge initial mistake, in my opinion, was that overcast um, Howling Warp Gale on Luther Harkin. Um, yeah. yeah. Because there was that point there where Luther Harkin came in to fight Ica Claw on his own yep. and can you imagine if he would have had that overcast howling warp gale ready for that moment instead of using it a couple seconds before then he could have pinned him in place and killed luther harkin right there um but yeah that overcast one that was a bit premature i think kind of really set the pace Dang. considering the damage he took just from that where uh he really didn't take much fire from the rattlings at all yeah uh yeah but seems if he just, yeah, waited, I don't imagine Luther could have survived that. But uh, it's only a best of three, or is it? No, it's over. Yeah, it's a best of five in Archon 1-3-1. Oh, yeah. So, well played to Archon, taking out Eracrastic 3-1. I will send him a gift card after this. Um, but, yeah, we're moving on to the next match, which is the final, which is hopefully going to be suitably epic between Chief and uh, Falcon. Round one. And you know what, Chief? Come on. I'm I'm not going to be playing favorites, but I'm totally rooting for the dwarfs this time because I always want an underdog win, you know? Let's see it, Stunties. Beat these dinos. <laughs> it's going to be a tall order. Yeah, we'll see what happens, though. Someone's mentioning that the long beards can be a strong matchup here. I mean, pick here, and it can be. You know, you can bring a lot of resilient dwarfs, but... uh. I'll be honest, I don't think you want to bring Soros in this matchup, though. We'll see what the armies come down to. Yeah. I mean, Soros are very tanky infantry, but usually now you can just... I mean, I guess you can bring a few Soros, but I think Red Crested Skinks are just what you want. Yeah. It's funny that Mazda Mundi and Thorgrim, to me, seem to have similar expressions. It's kind of like... Maybe they're yeah. the same person, and Mazda Mundi just puts on a beard for a disguise. I think most Dowie would say that's a grudge. Oh. And uh, in the words of a scaly one, though, I think they'd say that is not part of the old one's plan. <laughs> yeah. 
They just like, but, uh, Hola, skinks! Hola! But we'll see, uh, I don't see many skinks on this field, so... We won't hear many olas today, I don't think. Oh no. Well, do you want to cover this lizardman army and let us know what the scaly critters have brought to the field? I do indeed. And, uh, let's see what they have. Now, the core is five Saurus Warriors with shields. Uh, I'll go over some things about that pick. Uh, still a very sturdy front line, so you can allow your dinos to get a lot of work done. Now, there looks like just a single skin cohort, maybe just giving a little bit of extra chaff for this army. But now, these Saurus are backed up by four Proxicore. Truly a beautiful unit chat, and uh, I can't wait to see what work they can get done on uh, the Dowie army. Now, there is a small skirmish contingent of a single skink skirmisher. Now for the cab and the other mobility, we have one cold one rider. Yeah, yeah, just standard cold one rider. The non-AP, I mean an anti-large variant, which is very useful here. And we have the ancient salamander as well, which is going to be very pesky just poking away. And we do have a slam mage priest of light. It's going to be run the Verona Time Warp. The Lore of Light Wall. And we do a pause protection with that. A couple of very strong buffs, the Aura of Quetzal, Shield of the Old Ones, and Banishment. That rounds out, and, uh, yeah, that rounds out the Blizzardman army. And uh, what have the Dowie brought to deal with this? Well, the Dowie nice have uh, brought some interesting stuff here as well. So, going over their army, getting in their nice geometry setup. We're going to see a couple of long beards up front uh, with some dwarf warriors interdispersed between them. So it looks like grand total we're going to be seeing one, two, three, four, uh, five long beards and five dwarf warriors from the looks of it. Uh, we're going to see some miners here. Uh, we're going to see one, two, three, four miners get that armor piercing in for quite a low cost. We're going to have two Thunderers here backing everybody up with a great cannon. Sorry, just a cannon. It's the Dowie, not the Empire. Um, and then aside from that, we're going to have some Slayer action here. So we got the Dragonback Slayers. Um, and then for the leadership, it does appear we have a Rune Lord over here with Master Rune of Wrath and Ruin. He's going to be down on foot. And that rounds out the Dowie army. So a lot of infantry, five Longbeards, five... Dwarf Warriors, um, two Slayers, one of them being the Dragback Slayers, two Thunderers, and a Cannon. So, curious to see how this works out. What are your initial impressions of these two builds? The thing that just really stands out to me is, um, like someone was saying, Longbeards do beat Saurus. Mm -hmm. At least in a vacuum. The thing about Saurus as well is, uh, they're very slow from a lot of this uh, Lizard Forest when you look at Skinks with 46 speed. Mm -hmm. As well, you got the Croc scores, 46 speed. So now the uh, the Saurus are the anchor for this army, which will help, you know, hold the front line down and allow the large units to get the work done. But it's also the anchor that's going to drag this Lizardman army back and force them to take more cannonballs than they face them. Like to. So it's just, I like to see the Red Crescent Skinks and some Skink play with uh, more supporting assets than just the. Uh, hit hard. Uh, I, I just think it allows you to negate a lot of the power of the artillery, get in there, smash, and uh, we'll see though, with these four croc scores, the ancient salamander, which can just, it's one of those units that really, you know, gives the Dowie uh, a tough times, so unless they have a, a proper uh, tool to really counter it, which is usually the bolt throwers, because it, the ancient sally is a small target, so this cannon, We'll see how accurate it can be, but often uh, the shots may miss with the Ancient Salamander, but first shot is a hit, so. The cannon can take go. out the Ancient Salamander, that may be one of the keys to this game, because if that Ancient Salamander keeps shooting, I mean, Thunderers are offline, and it's just kind of uh, GG, Croc scores, and Saurus, and Cav, but we'll see. Yeah. I do like Falcon's uh, approach to the Dowie, you know, sending his Ancient Salamander, which he knows is a high-value target, along this... Um, terrain feature to prevent any cannon fire from coming in on top of it. Um, very patient approach, and I think that will pay dividends in the end if you can keep that guy alive. Yes, absolutely. And now, uh, let's see, what's the cannon shooting at? Shoot at the double up croc score, but oh, never mind. Croc score at. Reoriented. Reoriented themselves, and uh, yeah, they're doing fine here, but. Ooh. Yeah, this looks like it could be bad for the Dow. I mean, once this hits, I mean, Soros and Croc scores. Mm -hmm. It's going to be oh, an uphill nice battle up. for sure. And Soothsayer, thank you so much for the subscription. I appreciate it. But yeah, this Slon Mage Priest of Light is taking some serious damage from the cannon so far. 
Yeah, wow, look at that. That's a... Uh... It's good to get that damage down, though. Mm -hmm. I'm just not sure. It's just not the most important target, but then again, it's always... You can snipe the Lord, it's very powerful. Yeah, you know, you get rid of the magic early on, prevent any banishments from coming down on top of your Dowie infantry, you know. Uh, I'd say out of all the targeting, I, I can see why he's focusing on that one, but Thunder is going to start shooting the Ancient Salamander now. Interesting. We got that looks like, uh, looks like this Croxcore flank is just going to crash through. But it's interesting, the, the Time Warp went down in the center there. It didn't hit any of the Croxcores, just, mm -hmm. just Toothy Saurus, which I guess will help them beat these long beards anyway, but here we go, the uh, Slayers are pouring in here, and uh, with so much invested in this front line, there aren't many tools to get in the back line, occupy these Saurus, and with the two Slayers, they might be able to, you know, at least keep a couple Prox Scores at bay long enough for the Thunderers to get their work done, but here we go. Yeah, Prox now Scores Prox running through. into the backfield, and yeah, that's what they need to do. Prox so Scores pulling the, through. Oh man, the Slon Mage Priest is almost dead though. That cannon has been absolutely merciless on top of him. So how long is that cannon going to be online, my son, as the uh, full one riders are now getting in the backfield? The one Thunder is just about gone, Ooh. and the Ancient Salamander is pouring in shots. Ancient but, uh, Salamander doing so much work right now. Yeah, man. Now this is a really compromising position for the Dwarves, and if the Lizards keep pulling onto the uh, Thunderers and the other key targets, It could just be uh, enough for the Saurus front line to hold out, and yeah, look, that's land, 500 HP, but it might just be able to stay alive here. Oh, Extra no. armor has been popped with pause protection. Oof. Will the Thunder as well take care of it, though? 324. Oh, man, he's going to just barely escape, it seems, as some cold one riders come over and get on top of these Thunderers. Yeah, now look, the entire back line is compromised with Croxagores just, and Croxagores, Raptors, Ancient Salamander. Mm hmm. Just all throughout the back lines. But oh, look, Slayers are on the uh, Ancient Salamander, and with its low HP pool, it'll just get shredded. But the one thing I want to point out, though, is the Dowie infantry, like, there's still a ton of healthy infantry, including Longbeards yeah. here. And, like, the Croxagores are starting to get worn down. I mean, they've done a good job of shutting down the Dowie range right now, but there's still one very healthy Thunderer on the field, and just with how much Dowie infantry is left, I don't know, I could see them bringing this home. Uh, you see the Dragonback Slayers too, my son? Yeah, taking care of the Slon Mage Priest. Beautiful play, just chasing those units off, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, like you said, the Dowie infantry are held strong, and this uh, Lizardman force is just getting worn down. And, uh, the Saurus are doing fine in the front line, but they're just there in the front line. Yeah, and now they there's a lot of routing players. across the field, I mean, look, Croxagores are weak. Um, yeah. The Ancient Salamander is routed, taking a ton of damage from the Slayers, and uh, I think this is going to be a Dowie victory, man. Indeed, a uh, very strong play here. Uh, remains stalwart despite all that backline pressure, and yeah, Thunder is still online. Well, that the, the, the five Longbeards. by the Slayers might have been the, uh, one of the keys there. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know? yeah. Probably the nail in the coffin, so to speak, but here comes a fireball, yeah. and... Whew, do a little bit of damage there and then he's going to start routing again like yeah take that but bye <laughs> yep, yeah I the, think the five uh, long beards shot. oh sorry go ahead yeah. it's just a parting shot from the salamander but yeah the long yeah. beards for sure just, yeah. uh, it's a perfect thing against the Saurus they're just through the units they're uh, much tankier infantry and since Saurus are I mean are they but tanky you know? yeah yeah uh, yeah, that's why it just brings more skinks and more mobility. You know, uh, and I'll always say, you know what the best lord choice is in this matchup? It's a card. Yeah. Best matchup, best lord choice, just bring a card. Because it's fast. Uh, yep. You could just, he could have just ran around this entire Dowie formation and uh, nothing could have caught him. Only the yeah. Cold One Riders could uh, outpace the uh, Dragonback Slayers. Cause as the Dragonback Slayers decrease the speed, all the Crocs and Gores can get caught. The skinks. I mean, ancient yeah. Salamander, obviously. Not gonna go into melee. Uh, so, so yeah, I, know, I just like a couple of those uh, tools that are really tough for the Dowie there. And, uh, yeah, your T-Rex chariot. But it's just it's well played by the other uh, dwarves for sure. Yeah. Had a good formation and uh, yeah, pushed away the threats. That and they I guess when they needed to. 
Yeah, and I, I just really like the pick of the five Longbeards because not only are they so tanky, because, I mean, right now we see a full health Longbeard still on the field right now and another one that's close to full health, but more importantly, they also have the Encourage, and I think that was what kept the Dwarf Warriors and the Miners in the combat for so long, is just having not only a Lord to encourage them, but then also having the Longbeards who have that uh, trait that encourages units nearby. So, yeah, very clean victory to the Dowie there, and, uh, yeah, I like that army a lot. Yeah, despite that strong push, that encourage, it really held on. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely, man. And, uh, yeah, it was nice. It was a nice game. Definitely. Very well played to BBB Chief there, and yeah, that those thun Longbeards just really paid for themselves. Yep. I mean, one of them got 100 kills. That's yeah. pretty significant against this army, unless it was on top of the Skink Cohort or something, but... Yeah, the the cannon talked about a good investment. It only got three kills, but it single-handedly basically killed that Slon Mage Priest for the most part, um, and really yeah, put the often pressure. Often low kills is what you want to see, you know, when you are targeting those yeah. single entities, and it means you were on a uh, target the whole game anyway. You know, you didn't exactly the plan. You took out the targets you needed to, but uh, yeah, man, the Soros got 143 kills too. But I just think uh, you want to go. Uh, I don't know. Just, I like the skink since you're just faster. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to bring Saurus, I just don't think you bring so many of them. Mm -hmm. You know what I actually like the Saurus for here? Uh, <laughs> killing Slayers, if you can. Yeah, they would do really <laughs> well the there. Flanks, put them on the flanks and kind of march them up uh, at their leisure. And uh, once they get there, hopefully you can occupy the Slayers if uh, you allow the flanks to develop or something. But I don't know, I just... I don't think uh, I get... But regardless, I say that. I'm sure this can work if you just uh, smash the line hard enough. Baronas. Just smash it harder, dude. It's just the answer to everything. Bro, you know? You just gotta yeah. smash it harder. That's what Grimgore would say, you know? Yeah. Well, just guys... smash it, a bitch! <laughs> I also... Jump up and down, little bitch, darling. That gets into crumping. Yeah, the bestest. But, you know what? Never... Like, how crazy is it Is it that we've seen Falcon crush everybody with the Lizardmans... And the first faction that beats the Lizardmen that I've seen in recent memory is going to be the Dwarfs taking out Falcon's Lizardmen. That's quite something, so shout out to Chief. I feel like I didn't emphasize enough that that's quite impressive that he beat Falcon's Lizardmen with Dwarfs. Uh, it's quite a feat. Yeah, it's interesting. I wonder if he had some insight into the matchup prior, maybe some uh, idea of what Falcon might bring, or if he's mm -hmm. just uh, confident in that matchup in general. It's, uh, but yeah, it's, it's notable. It is uh, noteworthy for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, the Dowie, you know? Those resilient, stubborn dwarves. Well, and look at this. High Elves versus Skaven now. So, time to see what happens here. Looking forward to it. Gonna throw up that intro card. Got, oops, blurred out for some reason. But, yeah, got Averlorn here with Falcon versus BBB Cheap Skaven. So, rats versus elves, folks. Round two. And, uh... Let's go ahead and take a look at the battle. Someone said never enough Doom Wheels. I would have to concur, and I certainly hope we see some in this battle. Uh, yeah. Seeing just moments. There's never enough Doom Wheels. Yes, I never do this. this. <laughs> Make it zap zap boom. Well, here, I'm going to let you take over the Skaven, my friend. You want to go ahead and... Uh... Show us what these rats got on the field of battle. Yes, yes. Skaven army. True Skaven tide. <laughs> we brought us rats, slaves, and rats. Like rocks. <laughs> More kind rats. Spear, spear. Slave, slave. Wow. Shoot, shoot, teeth breaker. Rattle and gun. <laughs> Naughty boo boo, sharp shooter. Zap, zap. Boom. Shoot from long range. Make it hard, hard. Leader, leader, gray seer, plague, plague, make them sick, sick, cough, cough. <laughs> <laughs> this is happening. You now we have. I'm <laughs> tight. Bless with fell, fell. Warm, strong, strong. I think I'll do it. All right, ogre. Just round out, scaven army, army. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, pointy ear thing bring. Well, let's go take son, a look son. at the pointing ears, my little Skaven friend. 
once again, the elves are going to be spelling XMT because, uh, you know, that's what they're doing here. But uh, starting over here in the forest, we're going to see a healthy number of dragon princes. So two dragons, uh, dragon princes on the field. We are also going to go ahead and see a healthy number of Lothar and Seaguard here, what appears to be four of these guys. They do have spears for combat, and their bows have quite good range. Um, now we're also going to see four Dryads um, to round out this Averlorn force. And now let's go over to the single entity monsters and to the hero squad. And by the way, there's three Dragon Princes, not two, I lied. Uh, so we are going to see a Sun Dragon up here in the air, the youngest of the dragons. Going to be very fast and get some nice breaths in. And then we're going to see a Lariel the Radiant on top of her steed. She is going to be bringing the Star of Averlorn for that heal, Arcane Conduit, Earthblood, Foz Protection, as well as the Shieldstone of Isha, Shield of Safari, and Life Bloom. So that rounds out the High Elf Force, and uh, we'll see which of these two players comes out on top. Indeed. Listen, these are a lot of rats. Oopsie, uh, yeah. These, oh, wow. There we go. So I imagine Felcon's going to stay in the XMT formation once again as the battle starts. <laughs> yes, he is. He's a man of principle. Yeah, it's a bold move after the uh, the last game. Yeah, a lot of style. And yeah, there he goes. Okay, so here we go. Let's see if the Hives can pull it off. I mean, has anybody defeated the Skaven today? Yeah, the Vampire Coast just a few battles ago. Oh, duh. Thank you. <laughs> that dreaded Morngul Rush. That dreaded Morngul Rush. I How could I forget about it so quickly? Indeed. Skaven look like they're going to be content staying in their position on the hillside and using the Natty Boo Boo sharpshooters, I imagine, to force Averlorn to them, but looks like Averlorn isn't going to content themselves with walking up this avenue uphill. They're going to pivot and go far to the left and look like they're going to try to approach him from even terrain. Yes, yeah, very nice move here. Mm -hmm. Not rushing the engagement, taking even ground and, and going from there. Yeah, exactly. Playing it patiently, there's plenty of time on the board, and uh, there's a lot of Skaven to kill, you know? It looks like about... 2,800 units versus 700, so, you know, he just outnumbers them a cool 4 to 1. No biggie. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, we could see the, uh, the rats take this time to go back a little bit as they shoot away. Yeah. The natty boo-boos, but we'll see. It seems they, uh, yeah, it seems like they're content just using this terrain as a flank blocker. Yeah. And we'll see what the High Elves do. I mean, you know, Falcon's definitely taking his time. <laughs> he has five minutes before, you know, we'll start telling him he needs to attack or anything because the first five minutes of the battle are usually for positioning. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I'd like to, if he can take a few units go all the way up on the sail, that would be a great move. Definitely. Get some nice downhill get... charges after he comes around uh, the outcrops. Yeah, maybe some uh, suppressing fire. If he gets up on these ledges with the Lothar Sea Guard, you know, yeah. then the guns can't shoot him. They should be blocked by the ledge. It does look like the Dragon Princes... I'm not sure where they're going to start heading, but I worry that the Natty Boo Boo Sharpshooters are going to start getting some lovely targets now that they're coming out in the open, but a proactive Earthblood being cast down to try and negate the damage coming in. The winds are ours. So, there yeah. There we go, now. Uh, they're about to clash here, but I just would have liked them to see them let this flank develop. You see, the, uh, they're going yeah. up around this ridge here, but... They're not going to be uh, there for a long time. Yeah, I'm just going to give a chance for these rat ogres to smash through the dryads here. Absolutely. And yeah, just Ooh, like nice that. Breath, though. Ooh! Look at that. Is that the Rattling Gun Weapons the... Team? Oh. Yep. Roast the uh, Teeth Breakers there. There you go. Yeah. It's about half health, and nine models down yeah quite significant but now they are going to open fire here with their rattling guns and start shooting at that sun dragon as it tries to fly away god i love the rattling gun weapons team but you know as the rattlers come in to shut down the dryads i'm a 
I'm wondering how the Lothran Seag are going to do. It looks like they're doing a great job of melting these Brad Ogres, but do you think they'll be able to melt them in time before they close the gap? Uh, we'll see. Uh, then again, a nice move may be to keep uh, three lost from Seaguard, send one into combat just to uh, plug any holes in the line if one yeah. of these uh, Dryads falter. And uh, look at that, though. They're doing an excellent job. They've melted one, and uh, I think lost from Seaguard are a great match here since, you know, Rad Ogres may be able to get on top of them, but Anti Large going to come through. And yeah, yeah, look at that. The Dragon support. These Dryads are breaking through. Yeah, and here come the Dragon Princes. That flank that we talked about a while ago is finally showing up, and it's getting stalled by quite a lot of Clan Rat Spears, but I think this is going to be a precarious position for the Skaven to be in right now. Because this is three Dragon Princes up here, and if they get free, they can just do a crazy downhill rear charge on this frontline engagement, and then I think the Skaven are going to be crippled for the rest of the battle. Yeah, with all these Rat Ogres downhill, and Someone out of position if, I would say, just pull out this dragon, get on top of those Gaven slaves, and just tear around, and yeah, like yeah. you're saying, it would just snowball from there down this hill, and the IL victory and a glorious ca uh, cap charge. Yeah, and here come all the cav now, diving down that hill, and uh, looks like they'll get some good stuff done, and that dragon dropped a breath just there. Yeah, they're able to thread the needle and just kind of go through one of the flanks, and uh, yeah, look at this. Look at that route. The entire... Uh, yeah, the entire escaping line is uh, routing. Ooh, yeah, breath. big breath coming in from the dragon there. Then once again, the frame rate's dropping due to the high number of models on the field right now. But it's glorious. The dragon prince is coming downhill for that huge charge. And yeah, they're just folding up the Skaven line. And now the Skaven reserves are definitely having to be pulled out of the back line to come down in combat and support. Yeah, and just very good use of these... Uh Dragon Princes. Yeah, and they're all still full health. Big charge. Yeah. Man. Very impressive. Dragon Princes are absolutely devastating in this matchup so far. I'm going to go check in on Alaril up top here. Looks like she's been in combat by herself for a while, but she's coming out okay with the support of the Lothran Seaguard shooting in those arrows behind her. Yeah, with these Lothran Sea Guards still supporting the dragon. Uh, still very healthy with these dragon princes. It's just, uh, yeah. Yeah, very good position for the high elves. Definitely. And one thing I have to say I'm surprised by is Natty Boo Boo Sharpshooters. I feel like I haven't seen them get a ton of damage down throughout this fight, whereas in other matches we've seen them be so devastating. Yeah, I think they've been trying to snipe Alariel, and yeah, look at it. So many um, shots are just missing right now. Yeah. And maybe, you know, it should be sniping the dragon or uh, the dragon princess. It's a lot of your own. I mean, their yellow is very strong, but if you can't shoot her, you know, go after the targets you can. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, they seem to be missing everything on her. I'm wondering if there's something messed up. Or yeah, I guess she's just too fast for him. But yeah, the High Elves in the center, yeah, the Dragon yeah, Princess and the Sun Dragon just continue to devastate everything the Skaven send in against them. And they're sending in plenty of stuff, but it just terror routes and gets chewed up so quickly. Indeed. Oh yeah, Lariel tucking below the lip now. She won't be getting shot anymore, so smart move from Falcon. I think that's the safest call you can make at this point in the fight. And yep. uh, yeah. Nice star oh, of Aberlorn. Shots still hit her, but oh, really? Yeah, a couple. He just needs to go a bit further. There he goes. He's uh, redirected a bit further down the hill. And should be fine. <laughs> there you but go, again, Lyle. Just, just hide. <laughs> the main threats for his army, you know, they're all online. And despite the Loft from Sea Guardian compromise, you know, don't worry. They should beat just about any of these units in melee and with the Dragon Prince. And yeah. Yeah, look at these rats are just getting, just getting chopped up. Indeed, and now we see this dragon diving in on top of the Gracier. Terror immediately going to kick down on top of the Rat Ogres, and they're going to shatter. And uh, yeah, at this point, it's looking very, very strong for the High Elves, as the terror and the quality of their units is just absolutely mopping up the huge swaths of low tier Skaven infantry on the field. Natty Boo Boo Sharpshooter is desperately trying to get the hell out of here, but here comes the Dragon Princess. Oh, actually, wow. Very nicely done. Yeah, he's able to block a few of them, but 
regardless, it just seems with the, you know, the rat ogres are gone. Mm -hmm. The Lord is uh, pretty low. Yeah. He's a little blessed with filth going down, but this dragon is just a monster. Absolutely. Uh, this uh, sun dragon has been used to great effect in the dragon princes as well, and uh, in spite of some noble efforts here by the Skaven in the late game, I think uh, this writing's on the wall, but here comes a beautiful breath! Uh, looks like you got some good damage there on top of the tra infantry. Some units wavering from it. Indeed. And, uh, 140 yeah. kills. Yep. That sun dragon, like I said, has truly been a monster, and uh, here we go. Skaven just routing and... Uh, Yeah, once again, just getting chopped up by the martial mastery of these uh, high elven units. Yep. A very good game to Falcon, though. I mean, Chief, also a great game there, too. But uh, it looks like his uh, huge, massive army finally found a weakness, which was elite cavalry. <laughs> and, uh, you know, well played to Falcon. He did a very good job there where so many other people have really struggled to uh, do anything against the high numbers of Skaven in his builds this tournament. Yeah, I must say, it was a really beautiful game plan. Very well executed. Great Michael with uh, the cab and the key units, you know. Yeah. He had that plan of the flank, uh, getting on equal ground. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, he went for it, he stuck with it. His front line was taking a beating, but uh, still, he stuck the course. And he went at the hill, he smashed through. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was very well played. Yeah, no, that yeah, was a just, beautiful uh, game. You know, just maybe some, that's the thing, these... Uh, High number units are strong, but then they just get smashed apart by Dragon Princes with 300 and 200 and 250 kills a piece. I mean, look at these big units. So that's kind of the uh, debate with the 40 unit army. Sure, you can do this massive stack, but you can also just get smashed apart, you know? Yeah. It's a case where uh, rock beats paper. Mm -hmm. I suppose the vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. By the way, Oakard5, thank you for the follow-up, but... Yeah, no, yeah. rock beat paper right there. Uh, and somebody yeah, was pointing know, out in the chat, right chat too, I think, Arresto, saying incredible the win versus Skaven with an army, which his core is super weak to AP snipe. And yeah, no, it, it, he did have a core that was, you know, going to be in danger of the AP sniping. And the Skaven had the tools there, but I think he just really used the terrain to the best of his advantage by s sending those Dragon Princes around on the long flake, which I was worried about at first, but they showed up right in time. And uh, yeah, I mean, the kills speak for themselves. 240... 297, 202, so like close to 700 kills on these guys. That's insane. Yeah, then another 150 oh. on the dragon, plus all the units that just <laughs> ran away because of its terror. Yeah, no, that was a uh, beast mode by Falcon. I would kind of like to see a uh, clan Eshin themed, you know, just all slingers and uh, <laughs> gunner runners and whatnot. Then some play around that. But. I mean, it's just we'll too see. bad neither we'll one see. of them brought Tretch, because Tretch is the real MVP here, you know? Yeah, but, you know, where's Clan Rictus, you know? That's clearly the strongest clan. Clearly the strongest clan, but in any case, we got Clan Pestilence versus, uh, now I can't remember Queek's clan. Clan... Uh, Clan Moors. Moors, thank you. Uh, so round three, it's tied 1-1 one, one right now, and this is the final between Falcon and Chief. And we got a mirror match, folks, so Skaven versus Skaven. I'll also update one of my faction banners so it's a little more distinguished. Now, shall I take the green Skaven or the red Skaven? Why don't you grab the green Skaven for us? Let's Clan Pestilence brought to the field. The green and mean Clan Pestilence has brought a whole bunch of rats once again. Oh, and let's, uh... Alright, we're very close to uh, 5,000 chat. We're at just about, uh... Well, 49... <laughs> oh nine. So just ninety one short. Very close, but within a summon or two, we will hit that five thousand rat mark chat. Hype, hype. Anyway, so for Falcon's army, the green rats in blue on your screen via the UI bar. We have a ton of escaping slaves. We have five backed up by what looks like uh four escaping slave spears mm -hmm. as well. As well we have a bunch of clan rat spears. Another four clan rats as well. And now, the meat of the army, we have four rat ogres. The ROR Doom Wheel. The Wheels of Doom. Beautiful unit, I must say. It's blue electric glow. And it's a 
like a red Dumio color scheme. But yes, here we go. We have the Hell Pit Abomination. It's a beautiful unit. And for the Lord, we have Bracier, Lord Plague, standard stuff. Dual summons. Oh, we have we have Plague. What? We have we have the Vortex. We have Plague. He did it. He heard your call. Oh Here's my goodness. Call my son. We're gonna see the Plague Rat. It's a beautiful thing. Beautiful day. Hype. Hype. And uh, he has Arcane Conduit, and that runs out. Two spells on him, and this is the uh, the Green Skaven on him. Now, what has planned more is the rock deal, and uh, with this Green Skaven threat, my son. Yeah, well, let's take a look at the Red Skaven, and uh, over here we've got ourselves a front line with a lot of chaff. So, Chief going to be sticking with his um, game plan throughout the rest of the tournament, which is. Five Skaven Slave Spears, five Skaven Slaves. Uh, he's going to have the Natty Boo Boo Sharpshooters way out in front there with their stock to get some early pop shots off. Uh, behind them, he's going to have a line of Clan Rats, which appears to be five. And then he's going to have five Clan Rats with Spears in the back line, too. Um, yeah, five. Uh, he's going to have three Rat Ogres. He's going to have two more or three Warplock Giselles on top of that. So a very heavy ranged army here with four Warplock Giselles total. Oh, wow. And then he's going to have the Gracier of Plague here. I guess Gracier going to have Vermintide. Or not, sorry. Uh, yeah, Gracier of Plague with Vermintide. Blessed with Filth. Warpstone Scroll. Arcane Conduit. What's the Warpstone Stone Scroll for in this matchup? Do you know? Um, I think it's a mistake. Yeah. And then Blessed... It's a mistake. Yeah, it yeah. must be a mistake. Yeah, Unholy Clamor, Bound Scorch, Plague Rash, and the Portents of Verminous Doom. So, very heavy ranged Skaven army going up against very heavy melee Skaven army. Um, I don't think there's a single ranged unit in Falcon's army, so who's going to come out on top here, man? I mean, both players have a lot of chaff infantry, but I think the single entity monsters and Doom will on uh, Falcon's side may be a liability once he closes the gap with those Warplock Giselles. Yeah, indeed, it'll be interesting. Uh, I'd say, yeah, regardless of what happens, I mean, if you can just see if the Doom Meal survives this battle, I think most likely it's just Volcon wins. If uh, the Doom Meals died, you know the Giselles have got their, uh, their work done. Because that's, just, you know, that's going to be the real factor of that tilts and scales in this infantry engagement, since for the most part it can just be a wash with these uh, four rat, well, yeah, three rat ogres uh, against four rat ogres, so. But we'll see if the Doom Meal. Uh, can get in there. The Hell Pit is important as well, but the thing is the Giselles can get away from the Hell Pit. Uh, yeah. Well, they can't really get away from the Doom Wheel, so yeah, we'll see if they can just shoot that Doom Wheel. But otherwise, yeah, with the uh, the Rat Ogres and everything, it seems like a uh, big flank is just going to push through and crump these Giselles, which are, I mean, they're running around, which, I don't know, they need to be forward shooting, I'd say, not so, uh, yeah. and so passive in the back lines here. No, I do agree with you, and I'm I'm curious to see <laughs> Falcon typing out XMT once again with his infantry, and this time in the middle of the battle. <laughs> and uh, we'll uh, see what he decides to do. He's hiding a lot of his four units here in the forest, which I like, and I think he's actually going to try to run across this gap and get into the other forest um, for the approach to the Skaven. Man, those are some uh, style points right there, though. You know, like, that oh, is... Yeah. Uh... XMT's coming for you. <laughs> oh boy. Wow. That is, that's something. And we'll see, he made it work last game, so. He Let's did. see if he can, uh, yeah, walk the walk here. I mean, really, all that matters here is it's in a matter of can Falcon shut down the ranged power and close the gap quickly enough before they dish out the damage, and then. On BB Chief side, is it can I snipe down these threatening units like the Doom Wheel and the Rat um, Help It Abomination before they close the gap? Because I think it's clear when it comes to melee engagement, Falcon's army will win handily because it clearly has way more hitting power. But it's just a matter of if BB Chief can get rid of those key units before they close the gap. And right now, Falcon's making it very difficult yep. by approaching through the forest. Yep. As well, it's the only Skaven army with uh, Terra. Yep. That's a, <laughs> oh, it's a good point. Yeah, I'm just gonna smash through. I always forget and, uh, that the they got rid of Terror on the bells. To, uh... Did they ever have Terror? They used to have Terror. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I just remember because Ninja Hunt would always use them. Um, 
But yeah, so now in comes the frontline engagements on top of Skaven Slave Spears, and uh, yeah, it looks like Clan Pestilence going to get their infantry in place while they continue to flank around with their larger units. I mean, but you know, one thing that Chief is doing an excellent job of is he continues to push his Warplock Giselles as far away from the Doom Will and everything as possible. So it's like Falcon's going to continue to have to circle around in order to ever close that gap. Yeah, that's a good idea. Just deny that flank, just keep pulling back. And uh, oh, here we go. Looks like a big scorch going down, and you might be able to just roast all these rats in the front line here. Oh, that was absolutely devastating. That's a massive scorch. Yeah, look, now he's probably just going to break through, and uh, here he can just redirect onto the other targets and perhaps start washing down the line. Yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, I'm surprised these rats are holding strong, though. These Skaven slaves are still fighting. That is very surprising. Yeah. But I think once this rear charge comes in from behind, it should start breaking, maybe. Yeah, yeah, there goes the clan rat break, and then the Skaven Slave shouldn't be too far after. But, yeah, right now, Chief looking like he's doing a good job of setting the pace of this battle by having the range units. And, uh, you know, he's taking some casualties, but for the most part, it seems like he's just sacrificing the units he was already planning to sacrifice. Yeah, looks like he's uh, left the clan rat spear on the flank, maybe, to just occupy or slow them down for a moment. But, uh, I don't know, he's... He's starting to make a front here, but I think he just needs to keep pulling back. Uh, yeah. He just doesn't want to fight this battle. This is the battle that he... Yeah. This is Belkon's fight. He doesn't want to fight uh, <laughs> this rat's battle. He wants to fight on his own terms, and now if this Doom Wheel just gets into the battle... Okay, here we go. He's pulling back with the Rat Ogres. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I definitely want to pull back with the Rat Ogres. Let your, um, your weapons teams do some talking with their sniper rounds, and... Uh, yeah, this is this is an interesting battle. This mirror match is going to be laggy as hell, but interesting, I think. And now here comes the Doom Will. Yeah, and it hasn't taken much damage, my son. And that could be bad once he gets into this engagement. Yep. It's just going to start rolling through everything. The wheels of Doom indeed. But one thing I'm worried about this Doom Will is it's going to close the gap on top of these two Warplock Giselles, but then there's still two more Warplock Giselles behind them, and... I don't know if it's going to be able to tear around them quickly enough to not get sniped out. Absolutely, it's just uh, if these rat ogres as well can keep pushing through, and I think yeah. they'll be able to do just that since the, uh, the hell pit's yeah. supporting now, and uh, they should be able to tilt this uh, flank completely in their favor. Just roll over it from there. And uh, interesting, you watch the the backside flank; it has been won by uh, Chief. Yes. His game would have, for the most part, routed all those rats, but the meanwhile, the other flank is not going quite as well. But yeah, look at that Doom Wheel. You're right, it's taking quite a bit of damage from this uh, this pursuit of those Giselles. Yeah, and I just think that, you know, the Rat Ogres on Chief sides are holding down just long enough to where, you know, they're getting a ton of value from these Warplock Giselles. Oh man, that is devastating. That Doom Wheel is just dropping so quickly. Yeah, those are the shots they really need, and uh, a few more rounds like that, they might be able to, you know, delete that Doom Wheel and find some kind of stability on this flank, which is, and just rolling over them. Yeah. Because, yeah. Vulcan, though, uh, there are too many units bunched up here. They need to be going after the lanes here that have opened up. Yeah, I completely agree. Like, he needs to shift that target. Um, oh, wow. Now, look, the Warplock Giselles have all shift targeted onto Falcon's general, and that guy is a very big target and is taking a lot of health damage very quickly. It just seems like yeah, Falcon man. isn't shutting down the range power quick enough, and as long as these guys oh. are firing, it's going to be bad news bears. A plague is going down, though. Uh, oh! Chief's caster. Yay! It's beautiful. It's all that matters. But, uh, all the while, it does look like uh, Falcon's Lord is taking a beating. <laughs> but look at that. Look at that plague. I, we got to see a plague. This is a win in my book. No matter what happens, we saw a plague. But yeah, the balance of power is shifting really far away from Falcon because now these single entity important units are just getting sniped out really hard. But Falcon doing a great job pulling back those important units, and now he's sending forward his Rat Ogres, his Chaff, and his Hell Pit Abomination while he's pulling back his Doom Will and his uh, Plague Priest. And you know, the balance of power says it's very much against uh, Falcon, but I say yeah. he's in a very advantageous situation with the Hell Pit, these Rat Ogres, but he just needs to go after the uh, Giselles. Giselles, so, exactly. Uh, it's good he's chasing off the Rat Ogres, but I don't know, just go after the Giselles. Just, if he can just get in the back line, that's the value and uh, 
the anchor for the Skaven balance of power since they're all full health. They're all, you know, that's the third of the Skaven army right here. And, uh, yeah, it looks yeah. like it may be over now because they just didn't get in the back line when they really needed to now. It's, uh, they had a, a few moments there where they may have, but... Uh, maybe, actually. he's These rat ogres in the forest. Uh, where at? Oh, yeah, over here. Yeah, they're back here uh, clean up some other rat ogres and Gisales. And if they're well used, they might be able to occupy the last Gisale. Because Felcon still yeah. has all his monsters online despite the massive damage they've taken. So they can still provide some uh, some punch in the end game. Yeah. But yeah, here we go. Help it just fighting uh, spirits too. Like, help it needs to be in these uh, Gisales. It's, uh, it's not where it needs to be. Yeah, it looks like it's yeah, trying to pull through those you. spears right now yeah. and uh, get on top of the Gisels. And I feel like the Gisels need to shift target onto that Hell Pit Abomination as soon as they get the chance. So they start melting it down too. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, at this point, do you really see Falcon bringing this back? Uh, not really at this point. Just uh, as there's so many uh, rats on the field that can just clean up. Uh, the chap he has as well his rat ogres are now getting surrounded by spears and other rat ogres in yeah. the forest, so but we'll see terror is a incredibly powerful mechanic but his units are just they're just misplaced all over the field yeah I see the warplock Giselle's coming out here looking like they're getting a position to finish off the wheels of doom and perhaps the grace here yeah and that's what they should be doing they should run away from the hell pit Go well, after those uh, couple weakened targets, lead them from the field, and uh, as long as the, the Skaven leader dies, most likely the chain route uh, occurs just moments later. Yeah, exactly. Help it, Abomination, gonna fight bravely, but yeah, at this point in the game, it just seems that it's a uh, Chief's game to lose. Falcon doing a good job of, you know, trying to keep this battle going as long as possible, because he's right, as long as his help it's in combat, it's doing okay. It'll keep on regenerating, and... Uh, you know, he can try to tear out as much as he can before he, you know, necessarily concedes defeat. Yeah, man. As well, uh, Belkon may have the help it, but Chief uh, is the only Skaven with Rat Ogres still online. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a huge backline threat, and with that little bit of support, uh, there's going to be enough time for ooh, these Gisales just can start shooting the right target, though. Start yeah. Shooting. Rat Spears, obviously. They, they definitely do. Hell, bit about well, Mason. Or that, yeah. But uh, I'd say just elite. If you could get after the bell and just keep running from the hell pit, you know. Yeah. I mean, the hell pit's a little faster, but still, you can just kind of split and kite. Yeah, hell pit starting to take some damage now as the uh, warplock gazelles shift focus onto it. But more into terror route could easily come in here. Yes. Yeah, chief. I think yeah. has just played this battle really, really well. Yeah, it was a great flank denial. He won the opposite side of the battle, and uh, yeah, it's just a sign of a really good play. Yeah. And now the Warplock Giselle is going to open up fire onto the rear end of that health and abomination. And uh, yeah, I think the battle is over at this point. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, That's GG, well played that. to both players. And there goes the chain route. GG, well yeah. played. And what do you know? The Skaven army without terror wins the day. Can you believe it, chat? Yep. Yeah. Wow. So, well played to Chief. Taking a 2-1 lead against Falcon. Is Chief going to be the dark horse in this race and beat Falcon? I guess we'll have to wait till the next round to see. But, I mean, looking at these two armies, both players had very large armies, but... Yeah, who would have guessed it? The Skaven army without any terror is going to win the day. Ready to go. And yeah, this should be quite a matchup here. BC versus Greenskins, huh? Yeah, I got Elkhorn's BC versus Chiefs Greenskins. And um, I'm rooting for the Greenskins here, but I'm actually not because I kind of want them to go the full five because nobody else has gone the full five in this entire top eight playoffs. Um, it's always been 3 0 for the most part or 3 1. So. This would be the first time we'd go to a fifth battle, and that would be suitably epic for the final, but what do you want here? Vampire Coast or the Greenskins? 
counts, I mean. Oh, I know you want the green skins, my man. Nah, so you will, know it. I'll take the vampires, you know. Thanks, buddy. And, uh, you know me that's too. That's right. Well. I don't mind. I don't mind going over the uh, the undead here, and uh, you know, with some of the changes, uh, I've been playing them a bit more as of late. And, uh, they've been hit pretty hard with the summons and the heck, and just so many stacking buffs. So they do have some amazing lore choices, and you know, the normal summons have been uh, nerfed, but they still have the bark elf summon. You can still summon an extra bat doggo, which is uh, it's always fun, regardless of the game result. But anyway, going over the army, we have. A whole bunch of zombos, skeletons, five zombies, uh, which I'm surprised there's no uh, ROR. Tied up skull, backed up by five skeleton warriors, one of them being the ROR. The Konigstein Stalkers. Nice little uh, ROR unit with a bit more armor and poison. Now for the mobility, and there's quite a bit of it. We have two cheap fell bats. We have two blood knights make that oh two blood knights one black knight and we have two of the dreaded black coach hell yes just uh an awesome unit beautiful unit and as i would like to point out this is a carriage nah who cares but uh <laughs> it's basically a chariot chariot who am i kidding chat who am i kidding but yes we have two of them and now for the lord we have the one the only manfred von karstein and he has the uh the standard kit, Master of the Black Arts, Ray's Dead, Heck, Yuna, Spirit Leech. That rounds it out for the, uh, the Vampire Army. What has the uh, the Greenskin brought to deal with this undead threat, my son? Well, let us go see what Chief has brought to attempt to bring his people, you know, food home with the prize money. I don't know what I was Indeed. just getting at. But anyways, here's the Greenskins. <laughs> <laughs> the Greenskins here have five Gobos. They're also going to have two Black Orcs, or three Black Orcs. And they're going to have two orc biggins. They're also going to have the warlord's boys. Um, no way. The warlord's boys instead of the eight peak loonies? What the hell? Anyways, we got the rusty airs here. Two forest goblin spider riders. Two they're savage orc air boys. Are they? I don't see the other one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. My bad. The eight peak loonies are up front. I apologize. Phew. Thank it's God. It's the only thing, you know? You don't see one without the other. Yeah, I was going to be very confused. And usually if you only see one, it's the eight peak loonies. So that's why I was confused. Yep, but, absolutely. alas, now we are going to the leadership here. Oh, the Rusty Errors also. Don't want to forget about them. But the leadership here, Night Goblin Shaman with Wand of Jet. Uh, scroll of Leeching, I believe? Yeah, Scroll of Leeching. Gorkle Fix It, Vindictive Glare, and Sneaky Stabbing It with Sneaky Stealing. So he's going to really try to siphon the power recharge rate from his opponent with the scroll and with the Sneaky Stealing. And then he's also going to have Skarsnik here. Skarsnik's going to be naked except for Wa, and he's got Gobla with him, his lovely pet, whom he loves oh so much. But here it goes, Greenskins pushing out, and uh, you have any initial impressions of the battlefield before we get into it? Yes, uh, who doesn't want Gobla as a pet, you know? That's my initial impression. Gobla yeah. just made a big impression on me, you know? I agree and with I, you completely. I think we're having a moment. <laughs> but uh, besides that, it seems like with a black coach and not much mobility from the greenskins besides some horse goblin spider riders, which should be easily dealt with, you know, with the blood knights, even just some bats and uh, some zombie support and just the dragon flying by. Uh, the black coaches might just have a field day. Yeah. I am worried about the lack of mass here. The forest goblin spider riders are going to be absolutely vital to the green skin success and you're absolutely right yeah. they're not the tankiest with blood knights and stuff on the field i feel like there's a lot of things to make quick work of them but yeah man when you got black mean, orcs they are yeah. the best spearmen yeah indeed black orcs i mean the blorks really help and uh they have some good counter charges against the blood knights you know they, they hit just as hard mm -hmm. they put you know give it back with uh, interest there but yeah these forest goblin spider riders you know probably the most important units on the field i mean obviously you need a lord caster uh blorks but still the the poison and that little bit of mass and uh speed debuff you know uh be paramount for these blorks to get their work done otherwise you know still it's like you see these black knights here just charge in something mm -hmm. else comes in and hits them like the dragon but we'll see regardless the uh green skins are in a pretty good formation here good spot yeah. But I like this from the Vampire, I gotta say, though. They're just hitting one spot of the Greenskin formation. It's what you want to do, you know? They have the log, so you don't want to go across the entire front line against the Greenskins ever. Yeah. You just want to engage one point, or 
prevent them from getting a log off against your whole line and getting, you know, max value out of that. Yeah. Just hit one point, do as much uh, you know, pressure as you can and watch out for that log. Yeah, no, it's a very good observation, um, very well put. Because, yeah, I mean, when you get that full line engagement, it's uh, not going to work well for you as the vampire counts. Because you also can't heal a huge along the line engagement, too. It's more cost efficient yep. to just do single points of engagement. Yeah, especially yeah, with the changes to the heck now, though. Uh, look mm -hmm. at this. This is like a nice Oracle fix it. Yeah. Slowing this dragon down to just uh, 47 speed, which is the goblin speed. Yeah, well, now it's on top yeah, of the cab in the. Too. Ooh, that breath. Oh, no, and now, look, uh, oh, black coach. It. I wonder, though, look at this. The Blork's coming in with a little orc sandwich, and there we go. The popped. Wah, been popped. He needs to get some charges off, though. A he lot definitely of these units are does. still static. Yep. What's happened? I do not know, but so many of these units did not get charges off on the front line. I think he was too distracted by what was going on in the back line engagements there. Um... And yeah, we have Skarsnik over here all by himself. Some Black Orcs need to come help him, um, and they are nearby, but he stays by himself. What's happening on this wog, my son? My goodness, just, uh, it's uh, it's frustrating to watch because, yeah. you know, the wog has just ended, and now the Blorks are going in combat yet. Yeah, still, these nasty Skulkers are just throwing their loons. I mean, that was a massive opportunity to crump all yeah. this cheap Vampire Coast infantry. And the thing is, you know, the value on the field and the money is spent on the key targets, but mm -hmm. move the chaff then uh, focus on the main targets would be easy for that point on. Yeah. Another Gork will fix it going down on top of Manfred. It's uh, Greenskin's really wanting to slow him down as much as possible throughout this entire fight. And I really need to see some reinforcements from the Black Orcs come over here to help out Skarsnik. Um, he's now getting singled out by Manfred and the Blood Knights. And uh, those guys have just been standing there not helping. Yeah, it must be some sort of Orc betrayal against the, the Goblins here, my son. Seems yeah. they've turned their back on Skarsnik and now he's terror routing. And the yeah. Orcs are still holding, just holding firm in their formation, not going out. And uh, Skarsnik is getting torn apart in just dragon food now. And yeah. poor Gobla, he, uh, he may need to find a new home. I mean, yeah, poor Gobla. Who's going to fill up his food bowl every night, you know? Skarsnik right. took care of that squig. And uh, yeah, the, the loyalty of squigs is legendary. Indeed, and uh, yeah, look at that. Nearly, uh, oh, still, I thought it was about to shatter. It could just be moments away. And yeah, look at these black coaches now. They've uh, hit their third tier of buffs. Yep, and, and the black, the blood knights teams. with them. It's just, yeah, these guys are just running train through the back lines of the greenskins. And there's a lot of terror appearing now, and uh, pretty much the only things holding together are the black works at this point. Yeah, and you know, even if Skarsnik wasn't the, the middle and wasn't terror routing, he's just much as black coach in that ward save. It's so difficult, you know, with all this infantry being bogged down with the chaff, just can't deal with their rear charges and can't get enough damage down on them. Just that yeah. ward save is massive. Yeah, definitely agree with you there. And, you know, this is one of those matchups where, in my opinion, you know, you, you could do very well with Warzag. Um, yeah, yeah. over a Skarsnik, just because the effigy is so important when you're playing an undead faction. Gotta yeah, snipe that uh, lord. Yeah, man, I love where Zag and Smash Pass. Well, you get essentially multiple walls with the uh, the Bonewood Staff, mm -hmm. as that triggers. You know, you get your first wall, sure. Maybe the vampires do uh, some good movements to try and dodge it, but then the Bonewood Staff keeps hitting it. Eventually their units just crumble so quickly, and uh, as well, you can get a double magic missile with where Zag, the effigy of the Git. Yeah. Uh, I think Skarsnik could have done better. He just needed some support, regardless. Yeah. I mean, those look at the coaches, kills on though, these bl black coaches and blood knights. <laughs> yeah, man. Those guys were vicious. Again, massive kills on the Cav. Uh, 232. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, here we are, 2-2 ace match, and uh, these guys taking no prisoners but uh you know looking back on that match do you think that was a matter of the drawing board with the build not really having everything it needed or you know just yeah. getting outplayed you know black coaches on the field uh so much chaff just the, the perfect things to really deal with most of this infantry i don't think you want to bring quite so much infantry so much chaff like mm -hmm. five goblins the goblins aren't going to last that long a lot of them like this one goblin here will get zero kills and routed off instantly yeah it's fine to have maybe a couple just to maybe deal with some zombie chaff once the wog hits 
but going with five goblins, I just feel it's a lot, and uh, I, I like the core though, it's strong, and then it's some chaff to deal with the zombies, which in theory makes sense, you can just go after the zombos, but so much uh, flimsy infantry, and I just, you want something big that hits hard if you're going to deal with like a dragon or some blood knights, you know, so maybe drop the orc biggins, get a, a giant, or, you know, Orcs are good, but you could get spiders now. You know, spiders are amazing in this matchup, especially yeah. if you run them with Skarsnik. You know, mm -hmm. give Skarsnik the spider bodyguard, and next thing you know, you have a very strong anchor for the center of your army. Yeah. And uh, you can actually catch those black coaches. You can kill blood knights. Uh, it's just, it's so much infantry, and, you know, you see an army like this uh, get taken advantage of by black coaches. Just get to their third tier and just run all just run all over an army like that, you know, even with mm -hmm. the, the Blorks, because Blorks are good, but you often want something to synergize with them. They are the best spearmen, but, you know, yeah. Yeah. I just like a little bit more. Or just um, more archers, you know, if you're going to get so many numbers. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. seems to me like this army had a little pieces of a couple of different armies, but didn't commit to any of those builds. You know, like, it had Skarsnik, but it didn't have Arachnorok Queens to support him with. Yeah. It had archers, but it didn't have enough archers. Um, yeah. It, yeah, it was kind of strange for me. Um, but, nonetheless, a great series, and now here we are in the ace match, and El Halcon, it is a best of five, so this is the ace match. This is it. This is for all of the money. $200 or $75. I guess it's kind of a win-win, but I know I would rather have the extra 125 so... It always feels better in a tournament if you can, you know, end with a win as well. Mm -hmm. So, it always feels better to win that last game, and I'm sure either of these players will, you know, they're going for that that top prize. They want to go right for it. Absolutely. And, uh, looks like we have, uh, yeah, Lizardman here for uh, Felcon. He's uh, Saving yeah, he's banning class. Dowie. Yeah. Oh. He's, uh, yeah. He's not going to have that same Dowie army, so I guess he's. Uh, He's a believer in the uh, the dwarf resilience, clearly. <laughs> uh, did you see that? Dimmy G pointed out something. I was clean shaven at the start of the stream. It's just gone on so long. I grew this beard out. V Claw, remember the tournaments that lasted eight hours? Yeah, I remember. Do you remember the tournaments back in the day when they'd be like all best of threes and you'd just be like there for eight hours until the final? <laughs> well, yeah, man. I remember this one. It was a Swiss tournament. It was a ton of fun, but uh, the Swiss tournament was best of three every round, and there were six yeah. rounds. And the thing is, I made it to, uh, I think I was second in the Swiss, and uh, there was the playoffs afterwards. So, we uh, there were four players, I mm -hmm. made it to the yeah, the finals, obviously, I think I played uh, Anyaga. And uh, I think at the end, it was like nine hours, nine and a half hours. Oh man, that's And I so just much. felt completely fried. I played Skaven the whole uh, the whole tournament, I just felt like I was fried on Warpstone, for real. You know, like a real <laughs> Skaven. It was, uh, there's never been a tournament that long, it was quite epic. Uh, and it was uh, it was an amazing thing, but you definitely felt it at the end, that's for sure. And that was yeah, I mean that was like nine hours. Uh, yeah, it was a great time though. If yeah, you know, and... host, you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. But uh, and thank you to Jacob for the follow. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I mean I you know I try to do the regular tournaments shorter time frames, but I don't mind you know casting for six hours for these finals because. To yep. me, these players have worked for three months getting through my season to earn this position, and they deserve the best of five. And honestly, when it's this level of gameplay, I don't mind watching a ton of battles. It can get a get boring if you're watching a bunch of blob fights or you know people spamming stuff. But in these fights, I think just the competitive level of play makes it more than entertaining for me. So I'm happy to do it. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, absolutely. I'd say uh, the majority of these games have really just been exceptional play. Uh... Great strategy, great tactics from all the players, and yeah, you know, like they're really deserving of, uh, yeah, that time. Yeah, definitely. And Liquid it. Milk, thank you for the follow. But, yeah, sorry, go ahead. A lot of them have, you know, fought through those, they fought through those best of ones, you know, to get to this point, and uh, I think, you know, best of, fun, best of ones, maybe it's not a perfect world, but it's necessary to keep things streamlined, and mm -hmm. then you have, you know, streams like this and tournaments that can go on and on, and uh, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's all worth it because of the community in the end. We got a lot of great people here, and honestly, I enjoy it. I've made some good friends in the Warhammer community, and uh, yeah, don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Yeah, you know, there are a lot of strategy games. You see them really, you know, uh, the game's lifetime is, you know, 
just go on and on with uh, some good uh, multiplayer communities and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, I'd like to see the same for this game. Just hope it gets supported down the road. Because, mm -hmm. uh, look at these battles. They're just beautiful. And with the uh, third game still on the way, factions like Chaos Dwarves, Ogres, and Demons. Yeah, a lot of good things to come. Yeah. Well, do you want the Lizardmans or the Empire? Uh, let's see. Uh, I think you want to go with... Uh, the heroes, of, heroes of Sigmar. So I'll take the Scaly Boys. You're so generous. Well, what do they got for us on the field today, bud? We got a whole bunch of skinks. Who likes skinks? This is the game for you. And we have a single skink cohort, accompanied by two skink cohort with javelins, one on either flank. Now the core, we have three red crested skinks, backed up by two croxagors. And now for the cavalry, we have four cold one riders. Oh, no, wait. Wait, okay. Two Cold One Riders, but also two Horned Ones. As well now for the leadership, we have Skink Priest of Heavens, just with Wind Blast. Always a very strong pick. And then Zora's Old Blood with his uh, standard, kick, uh, standard kit. Horn of Kygor, standard die, what have you. That rounds out the, uh, the Lizard Army. As Beautiful well, of course, he has the uh, damage resistance and uh, foe seeker. Yes, uh, let's see. What has the uh, these heroes of Sigmar, the Elector Counts, brought to deal with these scaly boys, my son? Ah, uh, yes, the Empire of Man and the heroes of Sigmar have brought a rather large army to the field, and uh, I like it a lot. So we're going to see this formation is going to consist of what appears to be four, or no, five spearmen. He is then going to have five Empire swords, a lot of cheap infantry here. Um, he's going to have the silver bullets here in the army, and then he's going to have some artillery in the back line in the form of a great cannon. Now, for the mobility and mass of this army, we're going to have some Empire Knights, one on either flank, looking beautiful with their polished armor. And then we're going to see the Royal Outdoor of Griffites, Regiment Renown um, Demogriff Knights here um, in the back line, ready to dive in wherever they need to support. Um, now, for the heroes here in the Empire Force, we are going to see a single Empire Captain with Hold the Line on his, on him as a passive. We are going to see a Jade Wizard over here, also on foot. Going to be bringing Power Stone as well as Earth Blood and Life Bloom on top of him. And then up in the air, the true hero of Sigmar, Sigmar Reborn, some say. We have Karl Franz with Foe Seeker, Hold the Line, as well as Blood Roar. Um, so, Carl Franz will be flying around on his Griffin Deathclaw, and uh, I think we're in for a great battle between two excellent players in the fifth battle of this best of five. Um, winner takes home $200, second place gets $75. Yeah, what a classic matchup here. The Empire, the Lizardmen, lines about the clash. Yes. We'll see uh, if Carl Franz can be the true hero that the Empire needs. And take down the source old blood and some of these yeah. scary scary oh that wind nice. blast oh my goodness you That's see a huge uh, start. he needs to get rid of that king priest of heavens because man falcon is devastating with it every time and carl be careful don't get out of position bud unfortunately now that uh king priest just took a, a hit went right out of the formation and straight to safety <laughs> now, yeah Oh, Ooh, no. this looks like it could be a compromising situation for the Empire already as uh, all these uh, hormones are just pouring in and getting on the Altar of Fights. Ooh, Carl. Oh no, Carl, Carl, Carl! Is he going to be able to get out of this or is he surrounded and going to die? I don't even know right now. I Oh, that feels like a huge loss for the Empire already, so what's going to happen? Yeah, we'll see. Carl is just taking so much damage and with all these buffs... Oh, another Wind Blast! Damn, Wind Blast and just vicious. That's a halberd too. I mean, that's when the key units and oh, now they're terrored. That's when the main anti-large tools, as I was saying, and now it's just a royal altar from Rift Fights. They're at about half health. Yeah. And they're Carl. not doing as well enough. Yeah, man. Carl. Carl. Just Carl. barely got out of there. Carl, get out of there! Carl. All right, he's oh. up in the air, <laughs> flying back into safety once again. And uh, it's odd. There's only uh, Earth Blood on the field. It's uh, with the Power Stone as well. You know, if a regrowth could go down, he could put... I mean, Carl's back in the frame. I, I don't think he should be there. He's going to no. get pushed on by this Carno, and yeah, wow. Well, I mean, he needed a regrowth uh, a few minutes ago, but yet, of course, there's no regrowth on this caster, which I just... I feel like you need regrowth if you're bringing him, or at least another spell. Yeah. It's, uh... You, you'll have chance to cast magic. 
and just be idle uh, yeah. all that time. No, I couldn't agree anymore, but this. right now Felcon is coming at the Empire with a vengeance. There's just a fist of reptiles flooding through the front lines, and I have to say, this is looking bleak right now. I mean, Carl Franz and his Empire forces are close to the edge of the map, and a lot of them are getting ready to run off the edge right now. Yeah, it was just a beautiful flank overload by Felcon. He went through the, the forest to use it as cover. Yeah. Uh, to keep those dragon ball, I mean, uh, cannonballs from hitting his uh, cap. But then he just, yeah, just ripped through the line. Beautiful wind blast to start, and a few, a few more to follow it up. And yeah, Empire on the back line, back against the wall, just trying to fight to stay alive here. But it seems if the writing's on the wall, and Telcon will be the season two champ, perhaps, in just moments. It's looking that way, you know, Carl just surrounded by too many dinosaurs. He's got crocodiles on his left, velociraptors on his right, and a big old T-Rex running up his rear. So, this is looking iffy, and Carl, Franz, is he going to be able to get back in the air right now? And even if he does, it doesn't matter at this point. Yes, the last bastion of the Empire seems to be breaking here. Carl running for his life. He's left his troops. He just wants to get back to Altdorf in one piece. But oh no, these all these horned ones, they're dragging him down. The Cardinal has removed the Jade Wizard from the game. It's terror routing and will go right off the map. Carl has no more support. Oh, but these brave Sigmar troops, look at that. To oh. save their lord, but he runs off the field. And beautiful GG, well played. Yeah, no, that was, uh, that, yeah, that wind blast really set a rough pace. Two units deleted in the front line, and then, uh, yeah, that was that was rough. That was a very convincing victory for Falcon. I feel like he uh, he had Chief's number there for that fifth battle. Yeah, absolutely. It was just yeah, a few games got a feel for the play, and once again, he just brought a very strong force and smashed through numbers. This mm -hmm. uh, almost looks like the Skaven armies we've seen. You know, yeah, a large unit, mobile units, rat ogres, what have you, and it, honestly, the same spend on the rat ogres as he has in these Empire Knights and the Altar of Grid fights. Yeah, and uh. Then just a single range unit, well, two range units in this case, but uh, for infantry and whatnot, just the handgunner, just the cannon. And yeah, he just got him quick with all these uh, skinks. And yeah, like you said, it seemed like he had his number and very well played. Yeah, no, At least that, in that was, last game. That last game. The other games were so close. I mean, that last game, I think, was the the quickest out of all of them by far. But, um, you know, and not to take away from Chief at all, I think he's played all those games beautifully, but. Right there, I think that was yeah. just a matter of yeah, Falcon flexing his faction main muscles, understanding that when he has a wind blast on the field, like I feel like that's one of the most important things to get rid of because the amount of damage he gets done with wind blast in his armies is absolutely insane. And uh, yeah. you know, getting rid of that chap infantry with the wind blast, including the halberdiers, like he deleted two units with one. He got rid of the halberds. Like I, I honestly think that wind blast is what really lost the empire of the game that quickly. So, yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, it just helped break that uh, front line. And, you know, it just deleted the infantry that was helping support that flank. And from there, they just, you know, bulldozed their way through. Yeah. And yeah, just excellent use of Wind Blast. And, yeah, like you said, Chief uh, played excellent today. He had a lot of great games and some very well played games. Just, uh, you know, it's just one game it comes down to at the end. It's uh, so much on it. It's just uh, sometimes the other players, a good feel for what you bring in. He brings a perhaps better list. The Croxagors yeah. were just going to mulch through everything. You know, basically <laughs> the entirety of that infantry force, and then the horn ones uh, hard countered the, uh, or do very well against the Demis. Uh, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, no, that was um, a beautiful tournament. Like, I want to thank everybody for participating. And, uh, you know, Falcon, congratulations. That was well earned for sure. And a huge shout out to BBB Chief for putting up such an excellent fight against him in this final. Um, those are some beautiful matches, and I also just, yeah, Chief throughout this entire tournament and season has really been performing incredibly well, and I think in this final we saw just why he got here, you know. He was the only person so far in the tournaments who's taken off matches from Falcon in the top eight, so, you know, great games to him, and uh, better luck in the next season, but $200 going to Falcon and 75 going over to La Grand Pinga, and $25 and another honorable mention going out to Ark on the Black for getting third place. And then Aerocrastic, congrats for making it to the top four, man, and best of luck next time. Uh, um, looking forward to seeing any of the tournaments to come and appreciate you participating, bud. Yeah, and, man, uh, again, uh, yeah congrats to... Uh, oh, sorry. Where are you going? 
Oh, I was just going to say thank you to you, Romulan Dog, for co-casting with me and to Iron Thunder for co-casting yesterday. But yeah, Romulan, I really appreciate the help here. It, it really saves a lot of energy for me when I can have a co-caster help share the load. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, it's always a pleasure. Uh, mm -hmm. A ton of fun. And yeah, thank you again for hosting these tournaments, you know, because I appreciate that as well. It's, uh, it's always a great show. And uh, brings out a lot of great players in the community and they put on some great games. Oh, yeah, so thank for you, sure. Man. Thank you. Well, of course, my pleasure, guys. I do it because I enjoy it, and uh, you guys make it more fun. So just want to thank you all. Thank the chat for tuning in. It's been a great turnout today. 112 viewers, I think, was our max. So it's a great time. And uh, thank you guys so much for showing up. Also, Loopy, share the load. That's the Lord of the Rings quote. That's Samwise Gamgee, and I love it. Anyways, I'm going to hop off of here. My son, HW, going to be signing out, and I will see you more... Um, this coming week with some more tournament battles for season three um, and hopefully we'll have a season three top eight playoffs as good as this one has been so once again thank you to everybody who's participated the players the chat my co-casters you are all the best my son hw gonna be signing out i will see you next time